What's going on, everyone? We're going live. It's Tim with the Online Big Blue, of course, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. It's a Monday night stream. Monday, Monday. I'm trying to see if this is working because I got some problems here with the internet connection, and it keeps telling me my yard stream thing's not working. Uh, so I don't know what that means or what that doesn't mean. So I have to wait and see if maybe we're getting a connection issue. I don't know. We'll figure that out shortly. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Oh my goodness. Goodness gracious. What's going on? Uh, we know what's going on in giant land. Giant land is just, uh, is just sitting there right now. Wondering and pontificating what's going on. Emmanuel Reese. What's going on, Emmanuel? OGR sports is in the house. Oh, uh, we're trying to see if this is working here. My internet, something's not working right here on my internet end and i'm trying to figure out what's going on here but you know what we got the release of james bradbury of course um good thing bad thing indifferent thing hurts for real what's going on on this wonderful monday morning monday monday um good thing bad thing is a thing we all knew it's it's nothing like we didn't know he was going to get released it's a big lj is in the his house not like we didn't know what was going to go on like was gonna happen not like we were shocked <gasps> he's gone oh we knew everyone it was the worst kept secret probably in the nf seem fine on your end uh but uh I, i'm breaking up on my end uh i don't know what's going on something's, something's been going on something's been going on screw with my computer the last couple of days i gotta put up the new computer but i haven't had a chance to do it yet oh gee knockout what's going on my friend how you doing we all know who that is he changed his profile picture and changed it What's up? Everyone just says, what's up, LJ in the room? But James Bradbury, good, bad, indifferent. He's a guy that came in here as a professional. He took the money. He played well when he did at spots. It's our internet. Oh, my wife says it's the, it's the internet we're having problems with. We played well in spots, I should say, or he played well in spots. He, he, he showed, I think, this team a lot of ways how to be a professional um and you know what he was good for the young guys i'm gonna try to take down my uh my, my definition settings here uh he was good for the young guys plain and simple what's up matthew how you doing my friend and you know he he left he left you don't want to say he left under bad circumstances because i don't think under bad circumstances because he knew he was gonna be gone he didn't go to any voluntary mini camps he didn't go to any of the things because of the fact that he knew he wasn't gonna be here worst case scenario <laughs> worst case scenario does he go to Philadelphia? Because you know what? Philadelphia needs a corner. Philadelphia needs multiple corner, multitudes of corners. Does he go to, does, does Dallas try to think of a way to do it and take a big swing? Because of the fact that it's not like they couldn't use someone in the secondary. Washington could use someone in the secondary. Kansas City can use someone. Oakland can use somebody. Uh, and my other favorite team now, uh, tighten up, baby. Got my Titan gear on. Got my Titan gear on, repping for Malik. Malik was. Because he's still bringing the boom. He's just doing it in another city. But we're always going to be repping for Malik. Uh, what's up, Zinga? Will there be a show tomorrow? Where will Dom come out? I don't know. We're going to see what they're going to do a show tomorrow. Dom's got to work now. Dom's got to actually go into the office now. So it's making it a little bit easier. For what's up, Timothy? Timothy says, how you doing, Tim? I'm doing good. I'm doing well. Uh, the internet connection isn't reaching the attic. It's not reaching the attic. I'm hiding. I got to clean the attic. I'm cleaning the attic. You can see the baby pull in the back. I'm cleaning the attic like Joe Shane is cleaning house. I laugh. What's up, Zach Attack? What's up, Seti? How you guys doing? I laugh because I did a video and a subscriber pointed this out to me because I don't remember even doing it. When we assigned a Dory Jackson and I spoke and I pontificated in this video, how? Oh, you know what? We, we have a friend in this house. What's up, Big Frank? For Tim, will you live stream Thursday night? Uh, I don't know why. You want me to? Also, will season ticket holders get their tickets same schedule night release after? I don't know about that. I'm, I'm not sure about season ticket holders. Will I stream Thursday night? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. No, it's, come on, Frank. It's only Saturday. One Sunday, Tuesday, whatever the hell day is. We have someone sitting here looking dapper, looking fresh, looking clean shaved. I think we all know what it is. The co-host is 3121. The greatest friggin' podcast that there ever was in the history of the world. It's OGRs. I have no problem with my green screen. I have no idea what it is, but it is. We're going to have to deal with it. I'll, see, I'll tell you what the problem is. You look like an alien. I know. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you, have a, you have an ethereal glow. 
I know. I, well, I have that naturally. So. You have it. Well, if you have it naturally, I, I, I wish I had. That's why I'm sitting here in the attic. What's up? Chargers will sign him. I don't think. I don't know if the Chargers will sign him. Chargers might sign him. But where do you think, Ojo? Where do you think he ends? Where do you think James and uh, James Bradbury ends? Where do you think he he goes? Because you know what, <laughs> Ojo, you're in the matrix. Where? <laughs> I love that comment. You're uh, you're in the matrix. <laughs> where do you think he ends up? Where do you think he goes? Where do I think he goes? I think he goes to help now. Um. No, I, no, it wasn't his fault he got released. No, no, Let's be nice to him. No, I no. no I, I'm I, the bad I, I, guy. It's not bad cop, worse cop. <laughs> you always want me to challenge you, it feels like sometimes. Where do I think he's gonna go? <laughs> Anywhere that where there's a zone scheme, okay, and he can and he can thrive. Similar to what he had in the beginning at his humble beginnings in Carolina, if you will. His humble his humble beginnings. Coming in immediately and replacing Josh Norman, who uh, a Gettleman guy who brought him in to replace Josh Norman. I mean, he's he's a guy that is that is played in a way that, like I said, to me, you you sent me a text message. You sent me a text message, and it pissed me off. No, I'm just joking. Because <laughs> OGR said you seem more upset about this than I am, and I'm not upset because you know what? We all knew it was going to happen. It's well, you're not, not upset, but you don't like it because and to I me, don't like it. I understand me, it, I get it, but I don't like it. I don't like it either. And I understand. First off, do you feel that he fit Wink's system? I think he fits Wink's system better than what we have on the roster right now. I'm not saying he is a perfect fit for the system. I am not saying that one. I'm not saying that at all. But even with his, I'm not going to say limited ability in man coverage because he's still a guy that can play man. But right now he is, he fits better than a Dory Jackson. He fits better than Robinson. He fits better than guys. We don't have any idea what they're going to be able to do. And in wing system, if we don't have a CB one and a qualified CB two, it's going to get ugly and it's going to get ugly quick. Well, we don't have a qualified – well, we do have a qualified CB2 that can arguably be a CB1. Problem it's is can healthy. stay healthy. Right. And James Bradbury, obviously not really much for the injury history. And, nope. you know, we'll, 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 we'll see. To me, I I look at him more of a zone corner. I look at a guy that definitely lost a step. I'm not telling you we don't need him. I would love to have him on the team. I'm just trying to move on without him. Now, my question is step or – just a step in reference to the pass rush. It could that's, be, but that's, I mean, that's, that's the, the, but that's the big question. Cause you know what? You can only hang on so long as a corner before, you know, before you kind of just, you know, and I said in the video today, before you all of a sudden just g- not give up, but all of a sudden something happens, something you slip, you miss something in coverage, you get juked. And without that limited and almost zero pass rush, it gets a little it gets a little dicey and it gets a little scary. Here's the thing about corners. Behind quarterbacks, they're the position that takes the longest to come to fruition. Right. Yep. I agree. And eventually these young guys need to thrive. What Darnay Holmes going in his third year. You either sink or swim, buddy. Right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's time. I'd call him A-Rod. He's going into a second. We need to see improvement. Can you be a, at least a second corner, a quality second corner? Because that's who we're relying on right now. I, I don't see Darnay playing the outside. No. And Mr. Flott, we're not the big we're not that high on. No. I'm I'm not it's not that I'm not high on him. I, I'm just I I just I, I'm a well, you know, I just want to wait and see. <laughs> I mean, that's, I think that's where I want to be at. I, I want to wait and see. And then, you know, if you're really concerned after camp, if there's somebody, can you bring in somebody like Mr. Peters, who's actually played in the wing system that can be, that may sign a better, a veteran minimum. Well, here's my thing. And this is the thing I think about with the wings defense. You had Marcus Peters, you had Marlon Humphreys to, I would say, at the, at their peak to CB one and CB one B because of the fact that they both play quality. You still had, you had an aging Jimmy Smith's at times you had, what's his name? Uh, the safety Elliot. 
And at, and at one point in time, he had Ed Reed. I mean, so they you this system rotates around consistency in the secondary. Because I've said this before, if you take a look statistically at the Ravens' defense, they don't have one sack guy. They have they have 18 people that have eight sacks at the top and another seven that each have a sack. So they work for rotational basis with their pass rush using their schemes and use and creating mismatches. But you can't do that if the secondary doesn't hold up. And I, and I understand what you're saying. And he is more of a zone guy. He did lose a step. But I just I just get curious whether he lost a step or the lack of a pass rush caused him to lose a step. It's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both in my book. I mean, you know, when you have an inconsistent team like we do, any given play could be a breakdown from each individual. There's no – you can't just sit there and say, okay, it's this guy or this guy. We don't – we. Our glaring weaknesses are across the board. You can't just sit there and just pinpoint. I mean, maybe you can, but I'd be well, like, geez, I'm awesome. <laughs> well, you then, that. why didn't you? Why are you head coach? You want to know why I'm not? You want to know why I'm not head coach of the Giants? You want to know why? Because I said no. They said, Tim, they called me up. And I said, yes. And I said, what? They said, I want you to be the head coach. I said, no. I'm busy. I got a YouTube channel. I got a, a third-rate YouTube channel. I'm a Z-list celebrity. I can't be bothered. And I have a kid. Like and I have a kid and a wife and a horse. I don't have a horse. Look at me. I'm in my basement. I'm in my no. I'm in the attic. attic. I'm in the attic today. I'm in the attic today. <laughs> I told him no. I, I declined politely. I said, you know what? There's this guy named Joe Judge. You should give the job to him. I just, like getting, I just like getting it with you are fired up. <laughs> so, I think he does better when he's pissed. Well, I mean, it's. And I'm an easy target to get pissed at. <laughs> oh, yeah. Apparently, it's according to a lot of people here, easy target to get pissed at. You know what? You know what I relate to? You have a tough exterior. Yep. You have dragon scales. But yep. once you push through those dragon scales, guess what? what? You're a fucking teddy bear. Yeah. I'm teddy bear to people I like. <laughs> let's, let's, let's put it that way because I'm an asshole all around. Uh, straight up. Straight up. And if I don't like you, <laughs> you, you Oh, you, I heard an interesting question I want you to answer for me. Sure. I like questions. Okay. On this defense, there were it came up and I, I somebody was talking about like releasing Blake Martinez. I don't know why you would. You just restructured his contract. Not going to just restructured. But they were like, well. James Bradbury is more important to this defense than Blake Martinez. And I say nay. I say yes. I just want to, I just want to, you answer I, that question. I say yes because of the fact that you need a, you need like a Patrick Queen. You need an athletic linebacker to run, to really run the middle of this defense. And I know Queen plays well on the left side most of the time, but you need a guy. That got and what did he have? Uh, what's his? What was it McPhee? McPhee? I think it was the other kid they used to have or had. But you need you need someone to be athletic enough within this system to help create and to help cover because there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of difficulties because we're going to need guys that cover the. You might end. want to throw a three hander at the spam in the chat. Oh, we got a spam in the chat. Oh my god. Oh wow. Oh no, I like hot naked clothes. <laughs> that's not a spam that's the new that's the new sponsor if you don't want if you don't know <laughs> get some hot naked clothes it's it's, it's all, all good. oh we got uh uso uso is actually the one that got me to stream tonight. i said yo tim how you doing buddy is there a possibility of julian love playing cb2 or is or aaron robinson the cb2 and jackson cb1 um no I don't see Julian Love. I liked Julian Love better as a corner than he ever did as a safety. He got benched last year as a safety and then came back as a slot. But I can't see giving him. I mean, I don't know what you are. Tell me if I'm wrong. I can't see giving him the opportunity to play CB2. I mean, I can see him giving him the opportunity, but I can't see him manning that position full time this season. He's going to have his opportunity because at the end, it's, it's basically a tryout period in the secondary. Who's going to play that CB2? They're going to try out everybody. So, the reality is we'll know by the season, but yeah, Julian Love is going to give a shot. If he's the best, I'm worried. Yep. 
And uh, Miss, my old buddy Mazinga. I always call him Mazinga. Because <laughs> we talked about Mazinga the very first time he was ever on the show. And that's Mazinga on his picture. Oakland, Tim, moved the NFL team back to the kind of power I got. I don't want him in Vegas. I want him back in Oakland. Where they belong. That's right. That's, that's in right. about three years, it's going to happen anyway. I know. Let's face it. Three, three years ago. Todd Taylor says he could join USFL and play corner for any of the eight teams if he wanted to. Who, James Bradbury? <laughs> Julian Love, I think he's meaning. Oh, Julian Love. Oh, by uh, the way, that's, a, that's another thing that people aren't looking at, and maybe you're not high on it. Because I, I, I watched I watched part of a USFL game today or uh, the other day, and I, I'll give you what happened, and it's it, it's bad. But you, there's going to be tons of guys that are going to get NFL tryouts during camp to come in and try oh, and prove yeah. themselves. That's another thing the Giants could reach into the pool. I'm not telling you you're going to get anything special out of it. It's just something else you can look forward to. That's true. You could. Uh, what's LG says? LJ says he thinks he's going to the Eagles. I would go. I'm fine with any place but Philadelphia. Any place in the NFC East, I'm fine. Any place outside. You know. All right, he's gonna go with the Saints. There you go. All right, I'm happy now. Chris says if you think nothing changes, you got Jackson, and I, I don't like Jackson. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not an adore. Oh, I was telling a story. I was telling a story before I was rudely interrupted by you coming on your handsomeness coming onto the screen. I was. I did a video. I did a video about Adore Jackson a year ago. And evidently in this video, a subscriber posted it and then they commented on said about saying, and they said, you said so many things in this video that no one's talking about that. You talked about how signing all these guys was going to destroy the cap, how you're going to have to get rid of James Bradbury after you're going to have to do all these things. And then he hashtagged prophecy at the bottom of it. And then I actually went back and watched the video <laughs> and I will tell this person I was lucky. <laughs> I didn't know anything. I was just lucky that, that, you know, that it was, I think it was more common sense than it was me having some, <laughs> some sense that something was going to happen. Cause it just didn't make sense when the entire league was saying, how do you give a guy that played in four games coming off an ACL a raise on a roster that you knew the contracts were going to be detrimental to the team this year? I mean, it, it just, it never made sense to me, but I don't mean to blow. I don't mean to blow smoke up your butt, but let's face it, you know, the lack of common sense in Giants Nation is is far in play. So anybody with any sort of common sense will be able to read the tea leaves. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it's not uh, it was nothing spectacular. Matthew says the only way players can change teams now. I'm getting all blank jerseys of my old number eight when I played baseball because these players never stick around. I, you know, what? it's not well the advent of true free agency. You don't you don't have it like you did in the seventies and eighties and even to the nineties. You don't you don't have that anymore. You know it's it's uh you know if you want to be technical about it, Reggie White's the one that screwed everything up when he went from the Eagles to the Packers. But yeah, there's 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 no free and uh, we got Kayvon Thibodeau pick it up number five. I guess Graham Gano and I never understood that with Graham Gano. Graham Gano wore like three different numbers already. And people are like, well, he's he's a hall. So he's gonna be some somewhat of a hall of famer in this, and he's not gonna give up number five. I think he won, wore like four and three, and so it's not like he was married to five. I didn't understand. I didn't understand that. What 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 number would you like for your kicker? How about that one? That that is something we need to get ironed out in Giants Nation. Double zero. I'd like it. It's not gonna happen. Double zero. Place kicker. Double zero. Punter. Zero. And that's how they fall in your pecking order, right? That's how they fall. In my- <laughs> that's how they fall in my pecking order. Yes, yes, it is. Um, I mean, it, you know what? It, it's like the, um, it's like the old joke. You know, uh, what do you call a guy that hangs out with musicians? I don't know. So a drum joke. A drum. <laughs> that's the joke. <laughs> what do you call it? What do you call a player? What do you call a guy that hangs out with football players? Place kicker. <laughs> I mean, the only pro the only problem is, is the fact that um, we need the place kicker. <laughs> I mean, absolutely, Graham Gano is our greatest weapon. <laughs> the biggest question is, and I don't know if it's still true, who was the last player to wear double zero? I, well, you know what? Mine. We Google it. 
it's Ken Burroughs, I think it was. I think it's Ken Burroughs. I think he used to be with the I uh, used to be with the Oil Houston Oilers. Is it Ken Burroughs? Is that how you pronounce? I don't know. We have to Google. It. I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. I remember he's a wide receiver, and I believe he was with the Oilers. I think it was Ken Burroughs. Uh this is saying Jim Otto. No, Jim Otto. No. Look up Ken Burroughs. Uh, that's, oh no, here we, no, that's NHL. Uh, that's that's broad. I'm going too broad. I should I should have put NFL. You gotta put NFL. <laughs> N- there we go. I hope you spell it N F. And you are correct, Ken Burrow. Ken Burrows. Okay, okay. He you, died at the age of 73. Houston Oilers. I Come on, Tim. You should know this. <laughs> yes, yes. Long time Houston Oiler. Long, long time Houston. Houston long time. Smash that like button, Matthew says. Because if you don't. I'm going to cry. Uh, Tim, do you think Wink can turn his, this run defense around? Here's the only thing that worries me again about the Wink and the run defense. And I know we just trapped him. Who's your, who's your note? I mean, I know old people, old people, I'm an old person. The three, four used to be the nose tackle. You used to have two defensive ends and a nose tackle. Who's your nose tackle? Who Who's your Eric Howard? Who's your Jim Burt? Who's who's gonna clog? Who's gonna clog up the middle? And that kid from Arizona him. State or Arizona we picked up. Or Arizona, should, is, it is Arizona State. <laughs> it is Arizona State. Well, but but you need. I mean, who's your who's your gap guy? Who's who's gonna do the dirty work? That's what we were missing, and that's why we kind of failed last year because we met we let Mr. Tomlinson go. We let we let Dallas Thomas go, and it all fell apart. Oh, let's do a two toe super chat. Salute Tim online, Blue Balfour's greeting from the uh, Italian. I'm not used to this one because it's not the same thing. Uh, Nation rugby team training in Tokyo. All Jihard fans in America. What's up, Tuto? Hope you're having a good time in the Tokyo area. I like Tokyo. I've been to Tokyo. I'm gonna tell you something. Oh, by the way, I forgot about Justin Ellis. There you go. <laughs> Oh, just well, you know, we we got it, we got it all locked up now. <laughs> we we got it locked up, we got it locked down. Everything's working well. Uh, let's see, Z list. Yeah, I'm a Z list celebrity. Yes, I, I like to. It is DJ Davidson. And hello oh, wait, for what? Tuto no, dropping the super chat. I know, but I just want to say Tuto super chat. Good point, no, Tim. The just, yeah, Shut up! I'm talking here. I know. I know. I'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> You think you are? <laughs> what do you think you are? You're not even. You're in a green room. You're not even in a room. Well, unfortunately, I didn't like the halo around my head. I have to figure out what was going on with that. I like the halo. <laughs> T. Brad's getting a number five. Jay says that love play corner for a uh, for a year for. I I can't see him being full time corner. I I really can't. I mean. Talk me off the ledge there, Ujur. I, I just, I just, I just, I, he, he couldn't man. He got benched as a safety and he barely could play slot. What am I talking you off of? I think there's about three different corners on the roster that are better than him, including Mr. Flot out of LSU. And I'm not even high on Mr. Flot. I hate Julian Love. I hope he gets cut. How about that one, chat? I don't hate Julian Love. <laughs> I don't hate. Well, I don't. I don't hate him I don't personally. Hate. I just don't like him as a player. I hate. I like him hates. as a person. A player's gonna play, dude. Just shake it off. Just shake it off. You know what? <laughs> don't go chasing waterfalls, Tim. Don't go. <laughs> uh, the other guys. If you don't know that, another great movie. <laughs> I love the, I don't know if you were you probably weren't talking about the other guys, but that, that's a great because he always quotes TLC in the movie. That was Michael oh, Keaton. That, that was that was that was an awesome movie. Matthew says, Do you think there will be uh they'll try to trade Gal? No. <laughs> I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna get into that because you can't trade him. You can't trade you can't trade Kenny. You you'll get you'll get killed in reference to cap space. You're already dead in you're already dead in the water in cap space. So there's not, there's oh. not much the naked's back. And the naked's back. The naked's back. If you don't know, we are now sponsored by Naked HD XYZ online strips without clothing. Jo- go to their website. <laughs> Wait, that, that's our that's our new that's our new sponsor now. Um, that screwed me up. Now I don't know what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> Well, it's no longer poppycockers. I can tell you that one. It's no that. longer poppycockers. Tim, you need more. My mod, yeah, I know I need to, I need more mods. And then people, the mods that I have, they go to school and <laughs> they got lives. Well, yeah, I mean, you got, you have guys here that are reliable that even I notice are constantly here. 
Yes, but I like them. I like them commenting. Like Zach, Zach couldn't be a mod because then I wouldn't think I, I couldn't get to read the comment. I like USFL. I like USFL too, actually. I, oh, I, so I, I was enjoyed watching, some of the game. So I was watching th this happened verbatim. So I believe it was the New Orleans, uh, whatever they're called, Breakers versus, Breakers versus whoever they played this weekend. Uh, there's a turnover. The gamblers get the ball. First play, holding. Second play, incomplete pass. Next play, holding. Next play, a run for two yards. Now it's third and 22. They ran a quarterback sneak. What do you think happens next? Quarterback sneak. They score a touchdown. See, that's fun. They were, they were on like the 10. They went back close to the 40. That's they, fun. Like, the, <laughs> that's that's fun. I like that, though. That's enjoyable. <laughs> Uh, what is You'd be swearing up and downs if it was the Giants, I swear. I, no, I wouldn't. I, 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 this is a new kind of gentle Bullshit. I've, I've enhanced my feng shui in my whatever you're supposed to do. Devin Bush's fifth-year option wasn't picking that, picked up. Imagine if the Giants could get him to have another linebacker. Well, just because we got to wait a year. <laughs> so, I mean. So we can't we can't pick him up right now, but yeah, I mean, I I would like I would like I, I mean I don't know what Pitt, Pittsburgh was thinking, um, but I would I'd like I'd like I'd like him I'd like him on the Giants I think I think he would fit well into the wing system. Oh, he did say next year, thank you, and yes, it is Devin. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a little slow. Uh, I I did figure out something over the weekend. Daniel Jones, I, I know Daniel Jones next move. After he, you know, eventually ends his career with the Giants. Circus. USFL. USFL. He is going to kill it in the USFL. I don't think they'll take him. I don't think they'll take him. I want to talk about Dan Jones thing, but I want to get the knockouts thing here. The pastor has to right. be good to help the secondary. You're right. And and I that's what I'm saying. Wink, and I think, and I've said this before, I think Wink is going to be brazen. I think he thinks that he thinks that he can just will the same type of defense that he played in Baltimore on the New York Giants players. And I, I like that. About, and I just, I, I don't know why I'm thinking that, but I, and I like that about him, but I also think we've had coaches before that tried to fit octagon pegs into turnips. It, it, we, it just doesn't fit. It just doesn't make sense. And I, and I kind of think that, to his detriment early on. I think he'll figure it out, but I think early on he's going to try and make it, make it work. I think is a better way to put it. I agree with that. But the one thing I want to see, the one thing I want out of this year is to be able to hang my hat on at something on this team. I can't tell you the last time I had something that I had something to hang my hat on, on this team where I can say, you know what? That's going to be reliable. Only Graham Gano is the only one for the last two years I could sit there and say yes. But I want something else that's something tangible. Jay wants to put Dexter Lawrence at nose tackle. Don't see it. Nope. He's too Leonard Williams esque. He's a little he's a, he is an out of shape looking Leonard Williams. Dexter Lawrence, that is. And he hasn't proven anything the last two years. Yet we pick up his fifth year option. Yeah, I, I you know what? It was it was a low end. I, I'm I'm okay with that. It was a low end type deal for what he for what he could potentially bring. It's not like we're paying him twenty something million next year. We're paying him what nine million. No, 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 no! I just have to yell at my kids. I know. Uh, AJ <laughs> AJ says Eagles and the Cowboys brass like them Giants going to going to get Thibodeau and not a damn thing we could do about it. Oh, uh, you like to, yeah, you know what? But you also, the Cowboys, I mean, the Cowboys and the Eagles also screwed us out of Devontae Smith and Parsons. So, you know, for Tat, I think it's called Joe Shane, not Joe Shane, Brian Dable. I want to talk about this because people think I hate oh, Daniel Jones and I don't hate Daniel Jones. Brian Dable said this We're going to let the peacock fly. I can't wait. We are going to turn him loose, not only on the Giants, but the rest of the freaking NFL. And we are going to tell him, don't be scared. It's going to be okay. Just do what you need to do. Go and just throw the ball downfield a thousand yards, run wild, and let the chips fall where they may. 
You know what? At that point, you're only going to sink or swim. You know what? They're, I'm not saying they're setting this kid up for failure, but they're setting this kid up for failure. And I, and the fact of the matter is he's going to go down in a glorious blaze. They're going to leave no doubt in anybody's mind that Daniel Jones is not the quarterback of the future for the New York Vultures. So he's going to go down in a blaze of glory. I mean, I just sit there and think, and I see this, and I'm not trying to pick on the kid because I've always told that I pick on the kid. I'm not trying to pick on the kid. All I'm saying is this. We have seen him. We have seen the peacock loose. And we also saw 947 fumbles. He can't hold on to the ball. I have never, Mr. Ogier, I've never in my life, and I mean going back to Pop Warner, Never seen somebody fumble going down, tackled from behind while he had two hands wrapped around the ball. And the defender didn't even, wasn't even near him, was tackling him from behind, but the ball is like this and is in his hands. And the defender doesn't even have the, have his hands near the ball and he fumbles. I will say I've seen stuff worse. I've seen Phil Sims get upset and literally throw the ball, fumble the ball. It felt like on purpose. Yeah, but, that's, but that's Phil Sims. I just want to say, I have seen worse. I have not, it's not seen good, worse. but I've seen worse. I have not seen worse. And I have seen Phil Sims' first game going back to 1979 in his rookie season. I have not seen Phil Sims. I've seen Phil Sims pull some shit on the field, that especially early on, especially over like in the, uh, I would say back in the 80 and the 81 season that you were kind of like, eh, okay, well, you know, you know, maybe he does come from Moorhead State. Because I don't know who the hell he was throwing that ball to. But I have never seen Phil Simms fumble while going down, holding the ball in front of him with his two hands like this. Got the vice grip. He's got the kung fu grip. And the guy is tackling him from behind with his hands nowhere near the ball. And the next thing you know, the ball's on the ground. (laughs) It's like, how do you drop that? (laughs) Tim, I wish I could give you an answer. Sometimes you just get, ask me these questions that have no answer, like Julian Love possibly being a starter. It's not even in the realm of possibility. It's in the realm of possibilities for this team. What about JD? If he, is, if he is, he's going to be burnt toast on the outside. He's going to be El- he's going to be worse than Elvis Patterson. What about DJ Davidson? And we also have Chris Hinton. DJ Davidson, I like mm-hmm. him. See, see, we like we like people. We love people. Oh, he's a, Nikki goes, he's a fun-loving guy. He's 25 years old. I he's about to get divorced thing. next month. I blocked this thing like a thousand times. I know it'd be a troll. That's not being troll, JD. That's my new sponsor. XS, XF, whatever it was, Naked Ladies. That's the new uh, Naked HD XYZ. That's my new sponsor. Join them in as quickly as you possibly can. What about Nate Ebner? <laughs> we, can put Nate, we can put Nate Ebner in those tackle. Oh, Joe Judge would have put him in a nose tackle in a heartbeat. More trolls in Lord of the Rings. That was pretty funny. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Spam alert, spam alert. I know. I hope we give Jaron Williams a chance to compete. Why? I'm, and I'm not picking on Jaron Williams, but I'm just curious, Dale, why? What did we see with Williams at corner that makes us think that he's not a Madre Harper? And I'm sitting here waiting for Dale to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, here's the thing. You really, you really love your Maje Harper. <laughs> if you're not a quarter of this league, you are Maje Harper. Not, because of the fact that Joe Judge stole him from Oakland. Stole him from the practice squad. I had to sit there and get blasted for weeks. Because I said he is a big kid that can't cover. No, you don't know what you're talking about. He's a gem. He's a gem. He's a find. He's a ruby. He's, he's an a, emerald. He's a ruby crystal. But no, the kid couldn't uh, the kid. I would rather have Nate Ebner in coverage than Madre Harper. I also just like the name. <laughs> it's like Madre Harper. Should be in novellas. Matthew says Daniel Jones is the reverse of David Carr. I can see that. I'm not getting it. Neither do I, but I'm being nice. <laughs> I told you this is a kinder, gentler Tim. I did a video today. 
I did dose videos today. I saw that. I was shocked. I was shocked too because I was out all weekend and I was up at five and doing a bunch of other crap today. I did a video and I wanted to get your opinion. I talked about a theory of having rotational cap space, rotational spots where you take the last four to five spots on the roster, plug them in with minimum salary guys, not, but I'm talking rookie to first year guys, plug those guys in and then rotationally put them into the roster at spots that are locked. So you can save on cap space by moving them weekly to what your roster needs to fit your opponent. Now I did the math and it works. And I actually did it with six guys. And I took two guys that were veteran minimums over seven years. And then I did the rest as guys between one and two year contracts. And what it, what it allowed us to do was cap those five, six spots, have rotational guys who we can use weekly and then still save cap money because you're basically just taking puzzle pieces that are the exactly the same and putting them into the slots that are needed. And you're saving money by doing that with your last four to five spots on the roster. Cause the roster is going to be bad anyways. Zach, Isaac, got him. Isaac, I got that, but I'm talking about me. <laughs> it's about me. <laughs> It's about me. <laughs> no, I heard your video. I like it. If the math works, I'm happy, Tim. Well, the math works, but the biggest bugaboo, the biggest problem is you have to find these guys <laughs> that fit. Well, that's what you have coaches and scouts for. I know that smart ass. But here's, <laughs> okay. the, here's, here's the problem. They have to fit enough that it works. But like I said, if you do it math-wise, you could have only you could have like six million dollars in operational cap space throughout the season if you have a you know, catastrophic injury to someone that's still, you know either a second or a third teamer that, that would still allow you to keep that space is open while you're rotating guys in from from I just direction. don't know why they don't hire Kevin Abrams and hire you because I said no. Oh, so you you said no to the coaching job. They called you, me up uh, and said, Tim, would you be a capologist? I said, no. I'm busy. I got horses. I got kids. I got kids. I got horses. I got a wife. I got a yard in the back that I got to get 10 bags of freaking mulch into a small SUV because I had to sell the truck because I couldn't pay $47 a gallon of gas. I said, you no. Know you, you know what you got? You know what you should have said? Yes. I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm not some kid. I wish I was 40. <laughs> uh, OGR, Isaac Yadam, or Julian Love? I already answered Isaac Yadam. I know, but I'm curious. I wasn't listening. I now, thank you for the Super Chat, Zach. You're not going to get... You, you said Julian Love? I said Isaac Yadam. Oh, shit. I was going to say Isaac Yadam. What's up, James? James Williams coming in the house. What's up, everyone? Hey, there we go. Tommy for Tommy. Uh, hopefully, out of Neil, lot of uh, Corker. We, I don't know. You know what? I, 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 and I'm not picking on you, Tommy, but everyone's talking about the rookies and everyone's talking about how the rookies are going to come in. How well did Andrew Thomas gel that first year? How well did people like Xavier McKinney? I know he was coming off the injury, but he didn't really start playing well to his second year. I want to just give these kids a chance, give peace a chance. And I think the worst thing you could do on a team this bad is put undue pressure on your early draft choices because of the fact that they're going to have enough pressure as it is learning on the job. And OGR, I think that's what a lot of what we need to remember is a lot of these guys are going to be learning on the job. A lot of Giants fans don't have a brain. That's not nice. Okay, well, you know what? What ended up happening was during the three twelve and one podcast is the the evil side of Tim shot up into the air and then shot back into me. Okay, so he's the good cop. I'm the asshole. 
I always say that I've always said that with my friends, it's always bad cop, worse cop. <laughs> there's there's no in between. There's no you, in between. You said anyway. that on three, twelve, and one. You're like, it's not supposed to be bad cop, worse cop. That's what it I always know. is in my life. <laughs> That's what it always is. Uh Jay says, same old, same old. Let's get this season started. I don't think it actually is the same old, same old games. I am actually I am very excited. That's what she said about this season. I'm a little bit pumped about this season and I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I think it is because of the fact that I have a feeling that this is going to be such a fucked up season that, that we could potentially lose games like 43, 10, but I still think it's going to be interesting because you have an opportunity. You have a chance. You have, you are, you are planting the tulip. You are, you are planting the bud. Or whatever you plant with tulips, bulb, I think it is. And you're putting it in the dirt and you're cultivating or whatever you do. I'm not a farmer. What the hell do I look like a farmer? And then it blooms into a flower or a tulip. That's what happens when you put yeah. But that's what I think is gonna happen with this thing. I think there's gonna be a re I think we're gonna be bad the first like five, six weeks. I mean like bad. I mean like isn't like, that us the last No, I think we're gonna be like bad. Not Michael Jackson bad. I mean like bad. But then I think by like week seven, there's going to be a light bulb. And we're not going to still be good, but you're going to see things. You're going to see players mature and maturate. Right in front of your eyes. Right in front of your eyes. And that's exciting to me. Hey, as long as I have something to hang my hat on, that I can say that is something I can hang oh, my hat on. Oh, buy a damn hook. I want something to hang your hat on. Okay, I'm sorry. I was going all in with your story, and then you tell me to buy a goddamn hook. I didn't say goddamn. I did not take the Lord's name in vain. I'm, I'm Irish Catholic. Can't do that. And I'm Episcopalian. What the hell's wrong with you? Uh, <laughs> Phil Sims always came through in the clutch. Uh, not always. As did he. So did Eli. Yeah, he did. Eli did. Eli was a clutch guy. Uh, DJ always flops at the big moments. He's a little Dak. I, you know what? I have to admit, when Eli had the ball with two minutes left, down by four, and you're needing a touchdown, how many times, OJR, did you sit there and say, we got this? I mean, I, I, every time I saw him do it, I'd be like, he's, he's got this. He's got this. All against every team but the Eagles. He's done it against the Eagles a couple times, too. No, he has done it against the Eagles, but if you look at his career record. Well, yeah, career record, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but I, I always I always thought he had Daniel Jones when he comes in the game and we're down by four with two minutes left and he's got the ball. I'm walking to the parking lot. All right. Well, I can tell you I, I've seen a couple of these with Eli Manning. Get up in the air, get set up to my trotter, game's over. Well, you know what? I, I will say this about Eli Manning. I said this before. He is the worst player that I've ever seen in regards to having his passes intercepted on a tip ball. Anytime, oh, anytime anyone the ball with Eli Manning, you knew it was going for an interception. Oh, absolutely. If it hit the ground. I was like, wow, that's a surprise. You know, it would hit the ground, but before it would kick off someone's foot, pop in the air, there'd be an interception. Or if he tried to throw it to Ruben Randall. The worst was the worst was like what the four or five interception game with the Minnesota Vikings. Oh. Uh no, I think the worst to me was that Chicago Monday night game where he threw three interceptions in a row, like off of three passes, and they were all to Ruben Randall's side. And it was the first time I had ever seen Eli Manning yell at a player. That was the first time I've ever seen Eli Manning yell at anybody. Because Ruben Randall is the boss here. There's Ruben. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like okay. <laughs> and I, I remember that game because I was like, oh my, I, was, I was watching my wife going, oh, my God, Eli Manning's actually yelling at somebody. <laughs> out of character. Some uh, there was a chat I saw, and we'll get to it. Obviously, uh, was talking about quarterbacks in next year's draft. So, oh, we'll can get, get through. Can we get through this year's first? I thought Robinson looked pretty good at CB. Why is no? I think people are talking about Robinson, but again, you're ask, you are asking a second year kid who did not play extensively last year to come in and potentially be a starter. I think that's why people. I don't think they're not talking about him. I, I just think they're just not – he's he's not fully on the radar. Oh, let's see. Tommy says, get rid of O'Shane Zimenez, Slayton, and what on those O-lines that didn't do much. I don't even know why O'Shane's still on the team. Darius, 
Darius, like, he's going to be cut, which is not, which I'm going to hate. Cause then I can't sing. Oh, Shane, can you see? Can't sing that anymore, but uh, he's going to be gone. I think Slayton's going to be gone. I think a lot, I think some of the guys, and I think people have to understand, I think some of the guys that we, that we brought in for the offensive line help, they're not going to be here either. I think Slayton stays actually. I, I, I would like to see, I mean, I'm not a big Slayton fan, but we have David Sills. And, and you show so much trust in David Sills. You're actually – Tim secretly has in that attic a David Sills jersey. I do. What's his number? I think it's 83. Oh, it's Sonoris Moss. <laughs> yeah, I, I got I got a David Sills jersey, man. Three years on the team is done. I've you should have just from West Virginia. You, you just should have saved it and said West Virginia. Where, where's Zach? He's from Virginia. He's from West Virginia. He's a big David Sills fan. Now I see he says Jones is done by the bye week. Enter Tyrod Taylor. I think so. And I know we've talked about this, but do you think there's any chance in hell that Tyrod Taylor beats out Daniel Jones? I blocked these people. Why are they coming back? You got uh, these. Yes, I think it's a solid thing. And actually, I was off by one number, eighty-four. Oh, okay, eighty-four. But. No, they're, they're absolutely. I I've thought that the entire time. Blackbird called you out too. Said that's eighty four. Evidently, you don't really have a David Sills jersey. I said you had one in that attic. What are you talking about? I'm not in the attic. What you talking about? <laughs> what you? I'm in. I'm in the Giants. <laughs> I'm not in the attic. I need. I need to have a calmer base here. I need to have a calmer space. I need to have, I need to, I need to en enhance my chi. El Gigante is in the room. What's going on, Big L? Doing it, doing it, doing it, L. David says, preach on Reverend Tim. People are crazy. Expectations for this team. People got us winning. To I did see this. I did see, I went to the Bermuda Triangle. I went to, I went to the bad place. Also known as Twitter. And I've seen 10 games, 11 games. I have, to David's point, I've also seen 12. <laughs> I mean, I know last year you had a lot of people predicting this team making the playoffs, make, winning 10 games, winning 11 games. The year, seven, but yeah. the year prior to that, you still had people saying they were going to win 10, 11 games and make the playoffs. Why are they doing it again? I'll, I'll explain it to you. Thank you. Explain. explain. I was I was a kid once too, and I used to always think my dad was the realistic Giants fan. Jeff, that's not going to happen. I'd be like, no, we're going to the Super Bowl. I was ten years old too. Okay, we can dream, but some of these we have dreamers like out there, Tim, and they're ten. That's what's on Twitter right now. James was, Giants fans. James Giants. Fellas, unfortunately, we kind of need to be bad so we can get our quarterback. James, where are you at? Why aren't you on this stream? <laughs> where are you at, James? Where are you at? I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you this on an email, text message. <laughs> I'm very technical. I, I don't. I don't like to brag about my technical prowess. <laughs> oh, I need to get my other computer up and running. Uh, can a message can be sent and received from your iPhone through? Uh, yeah, turn it on. Turn that on. There we go. I'm going to send this again. There we go. Let's see if that went. Let's see if that went through. I don't know if that went through. Um, all right. Where was uh, where did you do, 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 do? Agreed, Tim. I like that. Uh, we need to be bad until week seven, and then Tyrod starts, and we go on a 10-game winning streak. <laughs> 10 games. That's it? I think we're going to win 18 games in a row. I mean, this team lost every preseason game. This team looks so bad at, at points of the preseason last year. And again, it, it, Prince, it was last year. But you still had people, what I like to call Sfee in it, and say, we're going to go win 15 games. It's like we couldn't beat the Home Depot team, but we're going to win 15. We have a rookie roster, potentially. You could potentially have... 20 some if you look at it logistically you could potentially have 20 players 
that are either rookies or undrafted free agents or just first year players on this team, on this roster. You could have almost half your roster be these guys. So you're telling me that 40% of the roster is going to be undrafted free agents. Let's see if you got that joke. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, there's something wrong with me. There's something very wrong with me. Uh, No, but seriously, I do think there could be a large portion of this team, of this roster, that's either undrafted free agents or first-year players or or a rookie class. I really do think that. And I think that they are going to go that direction young because they know they're going to be bad. They have to find that hidden gem, that hidden ruby, and then turn around and then go for maybe – I don't think when they have the $900 million in, in salary cap next year, I don't think he's going to go out all out and spend that money. I think he's going to be prudent, Shane, that is, and find guys that may not be superstars but guys that fit the system. Absolutely. And he's going to have real functional cap space, Yeah, not what we're going to have this year. Yeah, which is nothing. Uh, G family, how – no, I'm feeling – I'm not feeling good. How are you feeling about Flood? How are you feeling? I'm fine. You just like you. Just, you didn't like him a minute ago. Now I, you're. Fine. Oh no, I'm not fine with Flot. I I didn't catch. Now the end you're of that. fine. No, I I thought you were asking about how I'm feeling. I'm feeling I'm, great. I'm tired. Flot, not so much. I'm a little tired. I'm a little tired, but that's okay. I'll get over it. Uh, James says we could be winning in the fourth, and then when DJ has the ball, I'm like, yikes. I think you're right. I love. It. I mean, else what happened now? <laughs> what did I miss no, now? I, I, what, what do you miss now? I, I just uh, I went over to the Rangers uh, Pittsburgh game. How are they doing? No way. Bueno? Two pit oh. second quarter end of the second. I, I Mr. L says I strolled in late without Tim noticing, pondering how to place replace Bradbury. Simple. I have the Bradbury solution. I'd love to hear. It. Okay. In tomorrow's video, let me guess. No, 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 no. We re-sign him. Huh? For? Nothing. <laughs> Veteran minimum. Veteran minimum, which would be $1,070,000. We sign him for that. And he's going to play like hell for us. Because we, because <laughs> we we have incentive laden. <laughs> we 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 have incentivized him to play well for us. We have incentivized him to go to Philadelphia and intercept six passes. Oh my God, Zach! I think he's going to Philly. To be totally honest with you, what what is their cap situation over there? Does it matter with Howie Rosen? Oh yeah, that's true. He just back load, back load, back load, back Doesn't load. Matter. Imagine when he, Howie Roseman decides to actually like step down or leave, or he gets fired. Oh God! Then then the Philadelphia cap purgatory there to be a million under the cap, over the cap. I mean, <laughs> the cap. If that happens, you will literally hear the cap in Philadelphia go. <sighs> You'll hear it explode because oh. he's sitting there with a shovel, hammering it back in, going, "No, no, no, no! It fits! I swear it fits." Uh, Zach says, uh, I'm from Jersey. Go to West Virginia. David Sills is okay. No defense. big man. Yeah, you've talked about that. You talked about that in the conference. I got no defense. Uh, I'm going to finish eating. Then I'm going to hop on. Oh, James is going to finish eating. Then he's going to hop on. James, who the hell wants you to finish eating? Just come in with the fettuccine Alfredo and just keep that's, eating that's on it. stream. That's it. Just, what do you want to eat? What are you proper now? Just shove oh. it in on stream. Who cares? God, God, God. All right, who remembers? Let's see. Dale says, who remembers when Eli grabbed him on Bradshaw? Because, oh, I do remember that because he missed a blocking assignment. I do remember that. He almost got Eli killed, him on Bradshaw. I believe that was his rookie season, too. But I was just curious because I had never seen Eli Manning yell at a veteran player. You always would see him on the sidelines talking to them because there was plenty of guys that screwed up. But you always saw them talking to Eli, like, you know, you know, Eli talking about, you know, it's just, it's okay. You know, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. But literally he was yelling at Ruben Randall on Monday night football. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's not Eli. Be honest with you though, Tim, the giants in my lifetime have never been good on Monday night football ever. Um, I'm not saying we haven't won games. We have, but if you look at our Monday night, if record, you look at not- the Monday record, you're right. It's not a, um, 
I, I would not say we were uh, pillars of Monday Night Football. I think a lot of times, and you know, in the last, I would say, five seasons, not just Monday Night Football, primetime, Sunday night games, Thursday night games, we, we always seem to show up for like three quarters and then implode by we turn around and get into the fourth quarter. Tyron Taylor will be hurt. DJ will get hurt, and Shane will trade for Willis. Yeah, I got my Tennessee Titan shirt on there. Tighten up, baby. Tighten up. He's still bringing the boom. It's just in Tennessee. We'll always be doing football league. Now we have, now we have, wait, 24 likes. That's not good. <laughs> 24 likes. Uh, we need more likes. Uh, believe us, we need more likes. Uh, let's get those likes up. Come on, people. What do you think? I do this for fun. This makes me a millionaire. I love people that go, you just do YouTube for the money. Yeah, they, if you've ever seen, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. You don't I'm make for the money, money on you. You won't make money on YouTube until you get over a hundred thousand subscribers, people. I'm still looking and for you the have money. Concurrent, ver- concurrent viewers. I, I'm looking for, I'm looking, for, I'm looking under the sink. I'm looking in the drawer. I, I don't know where this money went. <laughs> I tell people that I don't know where this money went. I lose money. <laughs> My wife always goes, you have to stop YouTube because we can't afford it. Uh, let's see. Dable and Kafka will have Jones on the Hall of Fame career. Mayor is a genius. He knows how to win football. And we're on the way to a new regime, actual play calling, football awareness, and coaching. I love his attitude. I do Has too. he watched the last 10 years? Oh, Tommy's great. I like Tommy for one Tommy. I love I love Tommy. He's always got great comments. So Vegas is, oh, I did see this. Vegas is saying we're winning seven and a half. That's not crazy. Uh, I'm a betting guy, and I'm taking the under. I'm a betting guy, and how the hell do you win a half a game? Good question. That's why I put the half in there. No, but how do you win half a game? You don't. Oh, are we just going to quit? Did this one day they're going to say after the second quarter, Giants win 9-6. to six. <laughs> Everyone go home. We're not playing this game anymore. We're all done. I'm surprised you didn't even give us a touchdown with that score. I said nine to six. It's not. It's all field goals. Yeah, it's nine to six. Uh, do you uh, what, uh, do 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 you think that that Tim that bad Tim? I'm kind of on the positive side. I'm I'm always positive. I'm not like OGR man. I'm I'm this I'm this ball of positivity. Yep. I, I believe in in karma. And you can tell how bald you know you can tell how bald I am. That's why I'm so evil. <laughs> I always do think you're in a lair. <laughs> I mean, I think that. Plotting the end of the world. <laughs> uh, where is that Superman? Yeah, uh, my biggest fear is DJ goes somewhere else and learns how to finally go through his progression and stop turning the ball over. Absolutely blanks. I know I know that's a stretch, but still. I think you're right. I mean, I, I think you should have bigger fears in life. Because I'm not thinking that's not a fear, but I think you should have bigger fears in life than DJ going somewhere else and being good. Um, Jay Foster would be totally out there. If he did, I'd be happy for him. I'd be happy for him, too. I'd be happy for him. I'm not against the kid. And I've said this a bazillion freaking times. Just because we point things out that he does not do well does not mean you're against him. Doesn't mean you're rooting against there. I'm not OGR. I don't sit there and go... <laughs> I hope he fumbles. No. This is the wow. Kind, this is the kinder, gentler Tim. I'm trying to deflect, man. Got a lot of shit on Twitter the other day. I'm kind of deflect. Oh my God. Let's see here. Brought it out. Says haven't tuned in. Yeah, you haven't tuned in recently. You're probably looking at the weather. He's a weather man. Uh, what are your thoughts about the UNC guard and the linebackers we got? I like Beavers. I like Beavers too. I like McPherson out of um, – is it Mc- I, I always get his name. I butcher his name. But uh, out of Indiana, I like him as well. I think in some ways the Beavers – leave it to Beavers. I think you know, I think he could – I'm not going to say – I think he could be a guy that could fill in, not immediately, but be a rotational piece before maybe a third of the season's done. Because I think he does fit into the wing system. Thanks. 
Skyler says, y'all saying Tyrod is going to beat out DJ is stupid. Tyrod isn't going to see playing times unless DJ gets hurt. Y'all saying Tyrod is going to take over for DJ when DJ is healthy is like you all saying. Oh, I see. Malik was a first-round quarterback. Oh, Skyler, I like you. I do like you. Now go kiss your DJ picture and shut the fuck up because I'm telling you this right now. This kid is not a kid anymore. He's four years into the league. He's he's not a he's not a second first year player who's just learning. He's had these hiccups since flag football in the backyard when he was six. It's not all of a sudden gonna be like the light bulb is gonna go on and Thomas Edison's gonna step out and say he's gonna be fine. And if the light bulb does go on by some miracle, I will smile through it. I will happily come on Tim's channel and say, I was wrong. I will happily go on 312 and 1 and say, I was wrong. You know what that means? The Giants are winning. What we all want as Giants fans. That's what we want. And you know what? I'm going to tell you this right now. Mark it down. Book it. Malik Willis will take over for Ryan Tannehill sometime this season. Stop it. Nope. Telling you right now. Book it. I got a feeling. Uh, the, only way, the only way I see that happening is if Ryan Tannehill either one goes down with an injury or two, the Titans are out of it at the end of the season by some miracle. And because I think they're still going to make the playoffs and then Malik will come in. I think they're going to be bad this year. I, I, with King Henry, it's hard. No, they're going to be bad because I'm rooting for him. <laughs> Oh boy. I'm honest about it. I get you back as I'm rooting. That's why I don't make Met videos. Hey, I- I'm gonna do an impression of Tim watching a Titans game. Put him a leak! Put him a leak! You know what? I don't yell at the TV. I don't yell at the TV. That's one thing I what do not do. Well, I, curse at the TV. Games. I curse at the TV, but I've never yelled at the TV. And I, because I, I always thought, why are you yelling? Because they can't hear you. Now, if you curse at them, they can hear you. Everyone knows that. Gettleman made maybe miss Jerry Reese. Jerry Reese gets a lot of crap and he gets a lot of flack. But Jerry Reese did a lot of things. I, I do say that the 2007 Super Bowl should be more accredited to Ernie Corsi because he brought in the free agents, he brought in Eli Manning. Uh, but Jerry Reese still drafted that 2007 class. Who was in, which was instrumental in that Super Bowl run, and the 2011 team was Jerry Reese's team, in my opinion. And again, he drafted the guys in 2011 that were again instrumental. They may not have had longevity in their career, but they were instrumental in putting the Giants on the Super Bowl map for another year. I I'm not a Jerry Reese fan. Um. I'd never have been a Jerry Reese fan. He's the one that put us in the purgatory in the first place. So, yeah, you want to credit him for 07? Great. Awesome. No, I said I don't credit him for 07. I said that's uh, Ernie right. But it's, it's Ernie Acorsi's team. In 11, he did enough to get us by, but it was still partially Ernie Acorsi's team because, obviously, Ernie Acorsi drafted the most important player in that, that season. Yeah, but if we didn't have the players that he picked up in 2011, the draft class, I mean, you, you have you have to give him some credit. Oh, I will give him some credit, yes. Because like I said, I'm not a I'm not a Jerry Reese fan. You know, but you you still had guys that that contributed. I mean, you still had uh I mean and you had guys at the more towards the end of the draft that that contributed as well. I mean, so it's it's you know without I mean you had you know with Greg Jones sitting there and you had what's his name, the the six round pick Williams, the linebacker. You know, you, you you had guys that that showed, you know, that filled into the roster, which is what I hope that Joe Shane is doing with these later picks, that he's filling the roster with these guys. And and they're, you know, not that we're going to, well, maybe we are going to the Super Bowl. Now that you think about it. Kareem, how's it going, my friend? How you doing, Kareem? Uh, Mr. Arrow says, this is a New York Rangers fan safe space. Come and hide here, Ranger fans. Come and hide here, Rangers. I forgot the Ranger game was on. I really did. I would have watched it. Zach says Daniel Jones is 0-10 in primetime games. He's the Googler. So I'm not going to say I believe, I, I believe it. 
Uh, would you take a chance on hanging? A sh- no. Jimmy Smith is, I think Jimmy Smith is older than I am. Good career. Good career in Baltimore. Nose wink, but I, I can't. Uh, oh, Zach says, let's, what is this? Uh, excuse me. Oh, and seven mark is Daniel Jones record in prime time. If I keep, if I keep going down, will it be like, oh, and five? Will it, get, will, it, will it get better? Chris says, OGR looks like a Red Sox fan with that beard. You know, you kind of do look like a Red Sox fan. That's because I am a Red Sox fan. You are a Red Sox fan? Really? Yeah, I am. Because I live in Connecticut. I get both markets. And growing up, my father, you know, I, I followed what my father did. And he was a Red Sox Giants fan. All because of his uncle. But that's a story for another day. Why don't you follow the, the local team in Connecticut? Because there is none. I knew that. <laughs> Oh, let's see. What does Tommy says? We're beating the spread all year long. Easy. You have a lot of people that are looking at not the not the games, you know, not the whole schedule because we have the teams. We don't have the schedule. We have the teams, and we have the what people are saying is the schedule. And you're saying, you know, a lot of people are like, well, we have a fourth ring schedule in this. And I heard again, I heard this last year. These are all gimme games. We're gonna mark these downs as wins now. And what happened? Those gimme Broncos. games. Those gimme games turned out to zero and seven or something like crazy like that, and I think that's the problem that people are having. People are looking at this as gimme give. You can't look into the future. Only I can now and see what the Giants are going to do because you can't. Correct. Hard hitting commentary, by OGR. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I, sometimes I, I did, that's so. all I can do. I, that's all I can do is just give you. I, when I agree with you, I agree with you. I, I, there's not much more I can add. Sure, you can. Uh, OG, uh, let's see. Uh, says, I hope we don't start off 0 4 again. Hope so. I hope we don't either. Uh, Giants are terrible in nighttime games near my birthday versus the Eagles. Oh, that is complete fact. Yeah, that it's is painful awesome. to watch. Yeah, that is pretty bad. Uh, let's see. Gano will be the Giants' all time leading scorer by. No, I don't think he can be the all time leading scorer. Definitely not. I don't even know I'm sure who the Giants' all-time leading scorer is. It's not Tiki. To Google. To Google. Zach, Google that. Uh, when was the last time we? Oh, when? What? And Google this too, because this is a good question. When was the last time we won a Week One game? Google that too. Fabian, what's up, my brother? What are you doing? When is the last time? That can't be right. It could be. No, no, it's no, been no. a while. Uh, New York Giants. I just gotta make sure I'm reading this right. Beavers has Pete, the high, highest potential. Outside. Pete Googleck. Pete Googleck. Yes, that is correct. Kicker, vice kicker, soccer style. Mm-hmm. Replace Pat Summerall. Then Lawrence Tynes. Then Brad Deloiso. Yep, I can see. I know ooh, Lawrence. I I could see Tynes, but I couldn't see Deloiso. I well, love me. I love me some Deloiso. That's a good. Dude, that cannon. Ninety-three to two thousand. Gogolak or Gogolak? I think it's Gogolak. It might sure. be Gogolak. I'm her horrible last names. I believe that's. Kinky Barber is. sixth, and then Frank Gifford just behind Brad Deloiso. See, DJ is not gonna change. I don't think he. Be, I don't think DJ is not going to change. Because you have to change. I change every day. I wasn't wearing this today. I was, I mean, yesterday I was wearing something totally different. That's a impressive too. Thank you. But in regards to his play, I don't think he's going to change. I really don't. I think you might see a slight improvement. I mean, you've got to get a little bit better. What would, you, worse. what would you consider a slight improvement? I just mean like slight improvement, like less turnovers, but for him would be a slight improvement. Now, people will say he turned the ball over less last year. So wouldn't that be considered a slight improvement? That would be that would be considered a slight improvement, except he missed a ton of games. So no. If it, if it, it was over a full eighteen game season, then we'll see. Over under, he plays ten games. Daniel Jones. Over Not under. Starts. Are, are you setting the over under? Yeah. All right. Give it to me. I don't know. <laughs> Over under how many turnovers? What, 20? No, games. Games played. Under 10. Under 10. Under 10. I don't trust the neck. Now, I'm not saying games started. 
I'm saying games played. I think he's going to miss due to injury until he proves me wrong. Okay. All right. I think so. I think you're right. I think so too. But I was just curious about it. Malik's not going to start the season unless Tannehill gets hurt. I'm telling you that I don't think they're going to be as good this year. I think Tannehill is going to have a bad season. And I think if, yeah, you can have King Henry all you want, but we saw what happened that King Henry is, you know, the castle under, under King Henry is not indestructible. How many games did he miss last year? 10? Yeah, about that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, I mean, that's the way you got to look at it. So, hey, what's going on, my friend? The Gen- Rangers are frauds. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't want to talk about the Rangers. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the Knicks. I don't want to talk about the Rangers. I want to talk Giants. I want to talk Tennessee Titans. That's why I, I have a friend that's a Tennessee Titan fan. So you do? Yeah, yeah. He's a big time Tennessee Titan fan. Oh, he doesn't get him at his house, so he's always going to the bar to watch him. Yeah, I mean, you don't see, you don't hear many. I, I mean, I wouldn't think you would hear many Tennessee Titan fans in Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, but there, there's a couple here and there. Really? That's they're rowdy. Nice. They're rowdy. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to go to Connecticut. Todd says to be a little fair, all giant teams have sucked in prime time for like the last 30 years. Zach, Google that. Google every prime time game of the last 30 years for the New York Giants. We'll wait. Yeah, the Rangers are done. What's the Rangers score? Look at that. I, was- I have I have money on that game, so that's why I was following it. Uh, still six to two with 12 minutes, uh, 12, 12, 23 in the third Art. period. Zach says, I thought we played 2020 season already. Lol. 10, 0 and 10. <laughs> 0 and 10. How we, how we sound even started the season yet? This is a long wait for the season. It really is. It is a long wait. Ranger fans remembering the playoffs are a different beast. Penguins have the experience. Thanks. The last time I watched a full Ranger season, they won the Stanley Cup. Like, I really followed the Rangers. With Mr. Gretzky and Messier. Mark Messier. Gretzky wasn't on that team. Was he? He was not on that team? I thought he was. It was Mark Messier. Was the leader of that team. Guaranteed the win against the Devils in game six. Which I was at. They wanted me to coach the Rangers. But you know what I said. I'm busy. I got kids. I said, no. I didn't have kids back then. I was just busy. Uh, everyone say the Giants got better. I think the Giants get how much better? Because I see this. Everyone ranks the drafts. Everyone says this is the talent. And I saw, I think it was Pro Football Focus. It had like a chart. And the chart went up like this. And it showed all the giant players on how well, how high up they were up on the chart. The chartosphere. And they said the Giants had one of the best drafts. Do they ever print retractions? <laughs> They will be in three years. When they go exact. I'm not even three years. I mean, like when they go the exact opposite, because nobody knows. I mean, you can't, you can't, uh, you, you can't, you can't tell. What does the philosopher have to say? Nothing is a gimme game with Daniel Jones. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's see here. Todd said the schedule means nothing. You don't know who you're playing until you play them. The Bucks with Brady bad. Every team in the league has a much better shot. I agree that. You know what? It's any given Sunday. I wouldn't be surprised if we lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> I think I would be surprised by that. I would be surprised by that. Jacksonville, have you watched any Jacksonville games? Yes. I watched, I would say, the first nine games of Trevor Lawrence's career. I didn't, honestly, think, I didn't think he was going to finish out nine games. I, I honestly don't think Trevor Lawrence is going to be good. I really? don't. I don't. You know how I feel on big-name quarterbacks out of schools. Five-star recruits across the field. It is. Even for evaluators that evaluate talent, it's tough. What's what's like the last time you saw a guy out of a big name school come in and blow up the NFL? Well, I guess you could say Joe Burrow because LSU is big. <laughs> I was about to say Joe Burrow's, but but like after after Joe Burrow, like what's the last one you're like, oh my god! All our top quarterbacks we look at: Aaron Rodgers, California; uh, Patrick Mahomes, Texas Tech. Uh, Freaking what's his face out of from Bill Josh Allen, Wyoming. Like I can keep going. It, it's Malik Willis Liberty. Think, Malik Willis Liberty. So Ben Roethlisberger. Miami, Ohio. And uh what it was his um what's his name? Um uh, Philip Rivers was uh, the was North Carolina or North Carolina State. 
North Carolina State. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't remember which one it was. Doesn't really matter. Uh, Eld says this is the Pittsburgh is having a quarterback competition, and Shane is just handing. D- you know what? That's a great point. They signed Mitchell Trubisky. Pittsburgh did. They go out and then draft Kenny, and then you still got the other guy on there from there, Mason Rudolph. They've created an open competition to the to to the season. Daniel Jones is just getting the job. Uh, could that be Mara influenced? I think it is Mara. I actually do think it's Mara influenced. I really do. 2016 was the first, the last time we won a home or won a first game of the season. Everyone's saying that without even Googling. Nice. I think so. Uh, you know, at least Jones next appears to be healthy. If he flames out, he's gone to. If he balls out, then he's gone. Do we even know if his neck is healthy? No, we don't. There's been no confirmation. They refuse to talk about it. I don't even think he's been cleared to be hit. I don't. I don't think he. I, you know, I don't think he has been cleared for contact yet. But then again, they're going to say, "Well, we don't need to clear him for contact because it's not even training camp." DJ is going to get. So he said, "DJ is getting benched by week five. If you were a betting man, and I am, would you? Would I know? <laughs> That's why you should know this. Would DJ get benched? Is he going to get benched? And if no. he is, when? If he's going to get benched, it the Giants. The Giants are in a bad spot. We're losing more than seven games in a row. Put it that way. Oh. Now the other question is, what is how many games do you think he's going to play before he gets injured? Six. Does he come back? I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to give it a different injury designation. He's going to get driv- pile driven into the ground. It's probably going to be a broken clavicle out for the season. Wow. I can see that too. Too, We beat Dak, the rookie, the rookie Elliott. The Cowboys receivers didn't and run out of the bounds. Oh, that's right. The games. I remember that. They didn't run out of bounds. The wide receiver. I remember that was the game we won. I, I, oh, and, and, and to clarify, anybody who thinks I, I'm not hoping that happens to DJ, okay? I'm trying to give you guys broad detail. I hope nothing happens to DJ. I'm just, I just want to say, I didn't say it. <laughs> he said it. Not me. <laughs> it wasn't me this time. <laughs> I like Daniel Jones. I'm just waiting for the lightning. Uh, I got to ask, okay. Are we absolutely positively certain that either Stroud or Young will be the franchise guy we're looking for? No. No. Seems like the two biggest prospects are Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrows. I, 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 we've said this a million times. We cannot predict if they pull a Spencer Rattler, if they do a Tua and get hurt. You don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. And everyone's saying we have to wait till next year. What if next year comes and we're not? And I think you said it before, Ojer. What if we're not bad enough to pick I up one of these? Kids? I think we're going to be good enough. I think we're going to be reeling off wins toward the end of the schedule. We're going to have four to five wins. That's what I keep saying. That is not good enough to get you. That's good enough to get you right where we were. Maybe a little bit further back. Maybe seven, eight, right around there. Hit the like button. I keep forgetting. Hit the like button. I think I got 45. Your sponsors, likes. by the way, your sponsors, your new sponsors. I have blocked this mother blanker 400 times. How does it get unblocked? It doesn't. He just makes new accounts. Wow. That's dedication. <laughs> that is. That's impressive. I'm getting, you know what? I'm leaving this. If this guy comes back, I'm leaving him on because <laughs> that's dedication. I'm gonna block. Uh, I, I did block him. Stop telling me I didn't block him. I did block him. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. I, I have nowhere else to go. <laughs> Sorry, I was watching. Just take her to it. I was. I know. I like that one. I was watching Officer and a Gentleman the other day. <laughs> just quit, man. I'm like, I don't know to go. Oh my goodness gracious me! Great balls of fire. Uh, let's see here. Elijah says hello from the spam. Hello from Spain <laughs> to spam. Hello there, Logic Smiles. How you doing, Josh Allen? Of course, was from Wyoming. Uh, let's see here. Super Bowl. Let's see here. Super Bowls don't count. Half of them start before prime time. Oh yeah, you can't count Super Bowls. That's true. Because can then you, we can, win. can you do me a quick favor? Sure. And pay play my favorite soundbite from the soundboard. I can't find can the guess t- it. I I can't guess it. <laughs> I can't I'll, I'll give you a clue. Titans. Oh, I, wait, I know which one it is. 
I know which one it is. I got to find it, though, because I haven't labeled anything yet. So shut up and don't tell me that we all mean saying I didn't label anything. Where'd it go? Wait, there's two of your favorites, though. There's not one. I have multiple. You have multiple. Where'd it go? Where the hell did it go? Everyone just amused themselves. I'm looking for the sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. I distract him all the time. Uh, Put uh, that a- coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. You like that one? Yeah. And then, oh, okay. Oh, wait. Where was the other one? Uh. <laughs> you know, I really should label these. No. I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night. One day, what we're going to do is we're just going to watch Remember the Titans. Yeah, we are. I'm just going to turn it on. And then for two hours, we're just all going to sit here and watch it. I'm going to get banned again. I'm going to get all these copyright infringements and they're going to send me nasty things, but I don't care. I wasn't afraid of the NFL. I'm not going to be afraid of people from whatever the movie studio was. The NFL got mad at me because I streamed games from the stands. They got mad at me. <laughs> I thought I was doing them a favor. We missed we miss this con- comment right here from uh, Cipriano Alvarez. Tyler Van Dyke, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, Phil uh, Jernovic. And some other QBs the Giants should realistically draft next year. They aren't going to have a chance at Bryce CJ Stroud unless they tank. I like it. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say is no to Will Levis. He can't throw the football. So he's a from. No, he's got a he's got a strong arm. He's got he doesn't have a noodle arm. He has a strong arm. He's just not accurate. Very so much. Zach Zach says the Giants are 25 and 57 in prime time. And I believe Zach. I I believe him too. And I can't, that's why I don't, I hate when the Giants play in prime time. Give me a 405 or one o'clock game any day of the week. I don't want to see us on Sunday night. I don't want to see us on Thursday night. I don't want to see us on Monday night. Mr. Alvarez says, as I know, the last report from the months ago was he isn't cleared for full contact until August. So unless Jones can heal his neck like Superman, I believe he isn't going to be clear. For, no, he's de- he's definitely not cleared for full contact yet. Oh my God, he keeps creating block. <laughs> I have to give I have to give this guy all the credit in the world. <laughs> That's determination right there. That's determination. He just wants to be on the show. He he uh, just really wants to blitz all night. The question is that th- th- does that cons- count as a consecutive viewer? I don't know. We have to find that out. Uh, we're at 48 likes. We have to get up to 70. And I'm exhausted. So, you know what? Just do that for me. <laughs> Just do that for me. All right. I don't ask for a lot. I really don't. Oh, my God. Well, let's see here. Can Corbin possibly be the number three on the roster? Maybe back up Barkley. He is a shifty, patient, strong runner with good hands, real gritty player. What do you think? For me, I've always believed the Giants need a hammer. That's what they need. They need a hammer, a guy that's going to be able to reliably run in between the tackles. That's what she said. Why they go and get somebody like a Matt Burita. You're getting you're getting safe. I like Matt Burita for this team as a backup to Barkley. I don't mind it as a backup to Barkley, but he does Barkley things. Was what I'm yes, trying to he's, get. He is Barkley esque. Yes, he does Barkley things. So that you're just getting a repeat of Saquon Barkley. Go get me something opposite of Saquon Barkley that I can go r- trot out there and say, "Oh, Co, get me the yard." When's the last time we had any running back on this team? We were like, you know what? We're getting this damn yard. I. I we haven't seen it in a while. It's we, we do not have an earth, wind, and fire type philosophy recently. We ha- we have we have people like I don't know what Brightwell's going to do. That's the thing, um, or if he's I, even going to make the. I, I don't know if he's even going to make the team. That's the thing. Like, is anybody going to give this kid a chance? I thought when he ran in the preseason, he looked decent. He's a one cut and go guy, a guy we need. Yeah, but Platts and Gummer ran out 55 yards. <laughs> Rowan Gardner. Uh, anyone remember us of the movie Rookie of the Year? <laughs> Henry Rowan Gardner was the name. The, the, the manager can never say his name, so he's called him Robin Boozer. Way to go, Renamucker. 
Uh, and then he finally gets it right. And that's what always reminds me was Platts and Gummers. Robin Boozer. Uh, Baby, Saquon, Baby Saquon will carry us to the playoffs. I don't even know where Baby Saquon is. <laughs> Baby Saquon got lost. He's lost in the sauce. He's lost in the Grand Meunier. The hell Believe I me, I would love nothing more than to see Saquon return to rookie year form. Do you think he is somewhere between this year? Do you think he will somewhere be, be, be between um, year one and year two? I hope he is. We find a happy medium between the two positions. The two areas. I, Tim, I'm, I'm hoping more than anything. Do I think so? No, but I'm hoping he does. I, I, nobody roots harder for Saquon than I do. I love Saquon. I followed him all four years in, in or all three years in college or four, three. Can't remember. He says, there, I'll be honest, I'm finished eating. So what are you eating, an elephant? God oh, damn. OG, oh, here we go. OG. God damn. That's not nice. OGR, do you think Daniel Jones will miracle himself into a good quarterback in year four? Daniel Jones is 12 and 25. What your well, what are your records say? What when what are you? What do you think? You are what you are. Yeah. You He's asking really you what this question is. You should really, really listen to the 312 and 1 podcast. Um, First of all, be nice to Logic's Finest. <laughs> but yes, nice. Logic's Finest. No, I'm just telling him to listen to the 312 and 1 podcast because you'd get my answer there. But to give it to you on, no, I don't. I don't think Daniel Jones can do it. That's why I'm actively rooting for the Giants. I, that's why I think Tyrod will take over the starting job. Zach says him. Wayne Gallman was the last p- uh, true power back we had. Even you, then, Wayne's not... He, do you really consider even, Wayne Goldman a power back? I no, don't. I just think... I think Wayne Goldman's an average guy that pushes the pile. And I... And... and Yeah. Because... <laughs> he, I think that Wayne is at times was kind of Barkley-esque, but he doesn't have Barkley's explosiveness. He, we showed that when he got run down in... Uh, what was it? Uh, in Seattle. Oh, I think it was in Seattle. We got ran down from behind. Um, but yeah, but I, I don't think it was. I don't think gone. I mean, you think you, you think Brandon Jacobs more than the anything problem, as, as a power back. The problem that Barkley has had, his vision is not the same. There's a couple is, of times is last year. Vision that's not the same. He doesn't want to hit the hole. That's what she said. That, see, I think it's a combination of both because okay. there's just sometimes where uh, you where a clear gap would open up and he's running behind the pile, where a, a yeah. rookie Saquon would have cut that back and hit the hole. But you have to remember that he had um, he had the the other coach whose name we shall not speak tell him to stop dancing, to attack the pile, and it worked that rookie season. He, you know, he he had some games early on where he wasn't probably at his best, but when he started attacking the line of scrimmage, then he kind of became Saquon Barkley. And I, and I don't know if it did it maybe that did Pat Shermer get into his head about you know the dan- and and maybe the dancing, the juking, and everything else kind of got into his head after the Chicago incident. Possibly, I mean, you did see it. You know, a head thing is, you know, the knee. You've always said it takes almost two years to come back from so. Easily, easily two years, easily two years. What's up, Rich? Play on, play us. Play is going to play. Don't hate the player, hate the game. That's what I always say. True power back is what needed with a heavy tight end package. Uh, yeah. I, you know what? Do you? <laughs> Waving to the kids. No, no, no. no that's the wife's home. So I'm going to have to head oh. off. All right, well, OGR is going to drop off. We appreciate it. We're going to about another half hour running over here again. The spam chat is there. Tell Mrs. OGR, I hope everything is well. I hope she had a wonderful Mother's Day. And OGR, I appreciate you, I appreciate you dropping in for the last hour and a half because you said you were only going to hang out for an hour. So I do appreciate that. And we will we'll be having a new 312 and uh, one episode coming up shortly. So be on the lookout for that. Have any final thoughts? Well, you know what, guys? Look forward to the season, and like I said, I have a hope I have a hook to hang my hat on at the end of the season. Something to hang my hat on at the very least. I'll tell and you if not, we'll get you one at Home Depot. Appreciate that. <laughs> all right, my friend, have a so good. <laughs> He's got to go. Oh, all right, it's just me. 
and my shadows. Let us see what we got here over at his. Fabian says he's mentally is not there with his confidence and has fear in his bones. That could be Saquon Barkley. That could be our old buddy Daniel Jones. Tell me so. I think the poor play calling was an issue with the team. Poor coaching, no substitution awareness, no football awareness, just all effing sucks. So Barkley can be great if the coach has the right way. I think it is true. I do think that's true. I think, I think Barkley, people talk about the fact that Daniel Jones is going to be the, the, the catalyst or the driver of this team. Let's get five more likes, please. He's going to be the catalyst or the driver for this team. I don't think that's the case. I think if you're going to look at it from a perspective, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Saquon Barkley. I think Saquon Barkley is going to be the guy that, that pushes this pile and pushes this forward. And then we work that way. And I, and like I said, I don't think it's, I don't really think it's going to be Daniel Jones that we're going to need to rely on. I'm just saying that he was the last power back S type we had, but I do agree. Jacobs was a true back. I, I mean, I, I like I said, I mean, if you want to even go by the perspective, you can also say uh, new, uh, new Orleans dark was more of a power back, I think, than uh, Wayne Gallin. But I understand your philosophy. I see. I understand what you're saying, Zach. I got you covered, bro. Uh, Jones and Barkley haven't had any coaching or play. Con- I, I don't 100% agree with that. I think the philosophy, like I said, the last two years was to not have Daniel Jones be the one that loses the game. I think that. I think that's kind of where where we at with that. Logic Finder says it's all blind hope. <laughs> Jay says, "Boy, James can eat." <laughs> He must be able to eat. OGR, I'll watch 312 and 1 the podcast. It's 312 and 1 the podcast. Make sure you join it. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Hakeem be 100%. I definitely love to draft him, especially if they decide to go with the Bills and have the dual threat stop running an offense. If he proves he's accurate, oh my God, Giants, please draft him. I forgot what we were talking about there. <laughs> Uh, Tony says there's no hope. It's factual information for the world to know that the coaching leadership and play calling had been the worst. I don't think it's the worst in the last five years. I really don't. I really don't. I hate Pat Shermer. I've said it a million times. I hated Pat Shermer. I did a video that I said, Pat Shermer, a coach only his mother could love. Dot, 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 maybe. But he could call an offensive system. He brought the best out of Saquon Barkley. And he brought the best. He, he was bringing the best out of uh, out of Daniel Jones. So I don't think it was a play calling. I, th- I just think it's. Um, I, I just think it's. You know, I just just think he's not that good. Online Big Blue, what record do you think the Giants will have after the twenty twenty season? Be uh, after twenty twenty two, if we're rookie, if we're getting a rookie quarterback, I see in six games. Six games win, winning six to seven games. If we if we either get consistency with the quarterback play, uh, so Jacob Jacobs was all heart man. Jacob Jacobs Jacobs was Jacobs was just a guy that just ran through you. How many times did we see him just run over things? Uh, Bradshaw was quite a little power back, yeah, but I think Bradshaw was more of a speed guy. But he did uh, he was a power back. Hey Montana, what's going on, my friend? No movie trivia tonight. Um, I don't know. I don't have any movie trivia tonight. If you want to do a movie trivia, sure. I'll do a movie trivia. Can't think of anything right now. Uh, let's see here, Tim. I was talking about oh, Anthony Richardson from uh, Florida. Oh, um, I like Anthony Richardson. I would like to see what he's going to be a little bit better. The Shermer, <laughs> I always call it the Shermer. I would like to see what Anthony Richardson's going to be a little bit more, but I could see that happen. Uh, let's, let's get up those likes. We only have 50 like 50 likes. Tonight. I know the Ranger game is on, but damn, <laughs> I mean, damn, come on. I think the new Orleans win was, uh, was all Barkley. If you have a sound effect, you'll be telling Jones what to look for. Uh, uh, you know what? Someone else told me that too. Someone actually mentioned that the other day. And I didn't, I didn't, I had to really look into that. Uh, let's see. Fabian says, Tim, how many games will you give this coaching staff to show they are legit? I'm going to give them two years. I am literally giving the Giants coaching staff right now two years. To sh- and I'm not even saying that I need to see that if they're legit. I just want to see progress. That's what I want to see. Outside of Sherman, we had nothing. Mac, the doo-doo was actually a good. People forget the doo-doo revived. He revived Daniel, excuse me, Eli Manning's career. 
He took it from Eli's 27 interception season to have over 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns and 14 interceptions two years in a row. You know what, High, you know, you, you know what, Jay? You know what Highlander won the Academy Award for? Best movie ever made. There's a little movie trivia for you. Uh, there's, there can only be one. I actually like the TV series, The Highlander. I remember it was on like channel 17 or 29 or something crazy like that. Uh, remind me of Pat Sherman's record as a giant head coach. Says, explain to me how he was good in someone. Please. Okay. You want to know why he was? I will explain this to you. Pat Shermer's first season. I believe we lost four out of five games with the lead in the fourth quarter with under two minutes left. Now I said it before. I know one was on a 60 plus yard record field goal by some guy named Graham Gano. But he had his team. I hate Pat Shermer. And I've said it again. I hate Pat Shermer. But I will tell you this. And people can never take this away from him. He play, had his guys play hard. He had his play, he had his team play hard. 100% all the time. And that's one thing that I, I can never take away from the Shermer. I would like to take it away from the Shermer. But that is one thing that I can never take away from the Shermer at this point in time. Where'd my thing go? <laughs> That's what she said. Where'd that thing go? Oh, the yard stream right there. <laughs> Damn, Penguins. Evidently, Penguins are now up 7-2. to two. This is not only Online Big Blue, the Giants channel, but Online Big Blue, the hockey channel. We need to get rid of the Deadwood, Exi uh, Ocean Exhibit, and Slayton. Who else? I'm kind of with OGR. I, I, I wouldn't mind Slayton one more season because I think we're going to need a receiver, but I would get rid of Ocean. I've admitted I have admitted it before. I have a number fifty three Ocean Zimenez jersey that I got his rookie season because I thought he was going to be something out of Old Dominion, but you never know. McAdoo went to the playoffs. How many times did Sherman go to the playoffs? He never went. But how many times did uh, how many times did McAdoo get fired? <laughs> Sherman got fired too. It's it's just as bad as it is. Uh, let's see. Anthony Richardson is the guy I want if he balls out, but knows that Mara. Won't be able. Oh my goodness, James! What's going on, my brother? Yo, yo! What's going on? What's going on? Did you? Salute. Did what's you, up, everybody? Did you, did you finish the elephant? <laughs> the elephant in the room. Yeah, yeah. My fault. Because no, we, um, you said you jump on when you're done eating, so we just automatically all assumed you were eating an elephant. <laughs> That's what. Because we're like, what the hell is he eating? Uh, uh, two hours. Is a is a brontosaurus br brontosaurus burger. It was a bron it was a bronze. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this. We had a there's a YouTuber named Mr. Beast. And he's got like 50 million subscribers. And he's got this thing called Mr. Beast Burgers. He's got his own like hamburger. And my son, mm. who's young, was dying to get this damn burger. So I got him the burger on Mother's Day. It was terrible. It was god awful. Really? So tonight, tonight really? I made an online big blue burger. And he loved it. Yo, sometimes you gotta go homemade, man. You gotta do your own thing. You can't can't uh, always go out outside and expect it to be uh, to be good. But that's where Mr. Beast, really? Yeah, Mr. Beast. I have I'll to watch that out. That Mr. Be He's got like fifty million subscribers. Really? Yeah. I gotta check. Really? I gotta check him out. Never never heard. Nah, I never heard of him. But I'll definitely check him out just to you're not young, see you're what not kind of burgers. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not a, not a spring chicken. You're not a spring. You're not a spring chicken. James Bradbury, your surname, James Bradbury, gone. I talked to OGR about this, but I wanted to get your opinion. I'm not overly excited about it. I'm not overly thrilled about it because I, even though I don't think he fits 100 percent into the wing system, he's a guy that is a guy that's it's, it's he, he he's he's a, he's a quality corner. Who's coming into the, who can come in and play? And yeah. right now we got we we have a Dory Jackson and a host of others trying to man a corner positions on a defense that relies. We don't have a Marcus Peters. We don't have an Ed Reed. We don't even have a Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith. I'm sorry. We don't have any of these guys. And we're gonna hope that, that we're gonna run wing system with a Dory Jackson as our CB one and a host of others in the CB two. That's a good point. It's a scary point. It's a good point. <laughs> um, 
Well, obviously, to just cut the man, you know, the thing I'm really worried about is what you've been saying. I, I don't want him to go to the division. That's what I'm really worried about. You know, I know obviously I'm worried about our defense, but the, I feel like every time we let somebody go, they go to the division in the last, like, three or four years. It's just it's like mind-boggling to me. But, um, yeah, I, I wish we could have got something for him. I mean, I, I wish the brother, you know, good luck. Like you said in the video, no hard feelings. You know, I wish him well, but I wish we could have got something for him, some kind of compensation, something, you know. And it's kind of like he, when he came here his first year, uh, you alluded to this, he, he, he was the man. You know, you came in exactly what he was as as advertised, you know. Second year, little definitely a drop off, you know, definitely. But um, I think with a new defensive coordinator and actually getting a pass rush, you know, if we were able to keep him, he would have gotten back uh, to the way he was uh, when he first came. But um, it, it's sad to see him go. Um, I thought maybe in the draft we should have maybe addressed that position some more, or the you know our our safety or cornerback position more, but. You know, so I'll, I don't want to say too much, you know, uh, I got to see what Shane is going to do. You know, he's the brain trust, you know, it's a new regime. It's not get in and hopefully Mara's not stirring the pot too much. So I'll, I'll see what he has up his sleeve. Like, it was funny. You had to meet with the magic. <laughs> he's going to definitely have to pull some magic out, pull a, a Chris Angel or something. Cause uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't, I really don't know. He's, I mean, they got, I mean, they have to. Uh, Montana says DJ in the huddle walking around like where people, else, uh, they don't see each other. The only thing they see was they want to see. They don't even know they're dead. What movie, Tim? Six cents. Come on. You gotta, uh, give so you me got, something. You gotta, yeah. you gotta come correct and give me something hard. That's what she said. Come on. <laughs> come on there. Come on there. Uh, but my thing is this. Is he a perfect fit for the system? No, James Bragg was not a perfect fit for Wink. And I think, and I've said this with OGR, I think Wink is going to be brazen enough to think that he can make his system work with what he has, even though it's a limited pass rush. Because if you take a look at the Baltimore team the last three, four seasons, they had, they had like 38, 40 sacks, but they had like 18 guys that had sacks. Because they don't, yeah, they didn't have like a, I think one leader was like eight. I think the biggest leader they had was like eight and a half, and the rest were like four, three, one, 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 one. Yeah, it was like a platoon effort on, on the sack. Yes, on the sack. Uh, that, yeah, that's yeah. actually a great way to put it. It was a platoon effort, and it's a Herculean effort to run up this type of defense. But when you have the likes of we've said it before, with uh, with um, you know with uh, what's his name Marlon Humphreys, and then you had Brandon and not Brandon. Well, you did have Brandon Williams in those tackle. Uh, but then you had Ed Reed at some parts, and you had Jimmy Smith, and then you had Chuck Clark, and then you had yeah, I mean, yeah, Peters. you had, you know, you had, yeah, you had, you had, you had players, you had ballers yeah. there, you know, you had men yeah. out there, you know. Um, and, and that's, what do you? That's what I'm worried about. What do you? Quick, crazy thought, just to throw out there to you and everybody in the chat. What are your thoughts on maybe Shane is not really? trying as hard as he should right now because in his mind he knows that okay i don't have my guy yet Mara wants me to go with dj i can't i don't really have i still have some of these other guys here i can't really i'm cap strapped <laughs> cap strapped and i can't do what i really want so he's like doing little things but it's kind of like eh, i'm doing little stuff but i'm not really gonna really get going until uh, after next season, what do you what do you think about that? Like he's he's doing little things, but he almost knows like no, this ship is still got holes in it, and I'm not gonna like. I think it's uh, James froze there for a second. I always go back to the Knicks of the early '80s. Oh my fault, my cutting up. Ray Richardson and Michael Ray Richardson when the, when Knicks when the Knicks started losing. And they were heading to the playoffs and then just started losing. Michael Ray Richardson came out and said to the press, the ship be sinking. And that was always, that was, that was his famous quote. And I think with Shane, I don't think the ship be sinking for him, but what I think the problem is he understands that he's got all this cap space next year. And he's like, he's like guardians of the galaxy. He's trying to protect the galaxy. He's trying to protect the stone because he knows that stone is going to be his lifeline 
in 2023, 2024, and beyond. So he just has to get there. And had hooker by crook, what you need to do is you need to save. Now, he knows he's probably got three years at least before he's going to be severely questioned. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And, and I think, and I think that's exactly what he's doing right now. I think he's just, I think he is just saving that money, putting it away for a rainy day. And I don't, I don't think he's not, not trying. I think he's actually trying very hard to not spend that money because you could have restructured Leonard Williams. You could have restructured Adore Jackson. You could have restructured Kenny G. These are all the things that you could have restructured, and but you would have pushed that money into 2023. He cut Logan Ryan without using the June 1st designation because he would have eaten up 3 million in cap space in 2023. I think James is I think James is still frozen. <laughs> I think James is still frozen there. He looks dapper though. I got a block. We're blocking these guys, but they're coming in fast. They're coming hot and they're coming to fire. They're coming. In. We'll have to move James out of the stream until he comes back, till he stops moving again. But I think that's I think that's the problem. I think he's just holding on to that nugget. I think he's just holding on to that hope. That he can move because he doesn't want to move for what's Tommy says, ha ha ha, football, not American football. Someone's piece of tell him, there we go. There we sorry. go. James. Sorry, have a little complication there. Sorry, we, 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 got, we got we got you back. I'm feeling <laughs> good, my friend. How are you feeling? There? It says, Oh, it says I'm feeling good. Uh, but I think that's what he's doing. I think he's just holding on to that nugget and just holding on to that cap space for 2023. And I think if anything, he's trying hard. Not to spend the money. Yeah, no, that, that's when you put it like that. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, making shrewd moves when he can, but really knowing that he's gonna go in when he really has all the cap space and he can get his guys really in here, his quarterback. That, yeah, I, I could see that because I just felt like I don't know, you know, like during the draft, I was like, eh, it feels oh. like we're like, wait a minute, hold on, good fellows. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Get your shine box. <laughs> Go get your shine box. Good fellas. Uh, I just have to jump in. There. <laughs> uh, and, and like Tommy for one, Tommy says he's just getting everything off the books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. I mean, that's that's all. I mean, that's that's all he's doing. Mark Ryan, welcome to Cap Hell. We're in Cap Hell. We are. Yeah. And, and there's gonna be there's gonna be no nice way to put it. There's gonna be no way to quickly get around it. And like I said, if you don't want to, see, you he took he, he took pains, staking maneuverability, not to renegotiate Leonard Williams, Adoree Jackson, or Kenny G. The, the, the Leonard Williams one, you know. I mean, I know Kenny's not coming off his money. I know he, you know, he showed up on camp. He's the first guy at camp talking about Tony needs to be here. It's like, yeah, you you need to catch some touchdowns, both of y'all. Now, first of all, I'm not even going to say this movie because James and I have talked about a Bronx Tale a million times, and it's yeah. Cologido and everyone else. So now you can't leave. Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, James. We're we're doing movie trivia at one point. Uh, no, just... Trying try to roast me because I said Neil will leave uh, will leave to be a left tackle on another team when his rookie contract expires. You know what's funny about this comment? It's Orlando Brown Jr. of the Ravens. He wanted to leave because he wanted, and it's just not crazy, Mr. Alvarez. He's he wanted to leave because he he the left tackle in Baltimore got hurt. He came mm -hmm. in, in for the left tackle. He played well yep. enough. He was on a six hundred million six hundred thousand dollar rookie contract, and he wanted to be a left tackle because you want to get paid, player. Of course, especially if you're putting in the work, and that you're putting in the work, and that's why I'm not. I would not be. That would not be crazy if Andrew Thomas turns into. A beast, and as a ten-year All-Pro guy, yeah, he may turn around and say, "I don't want to be here." Well, hopefully that doesn't happen, and we can't let again. We can't let the players that are actually good walk out like with or trade them like Pew or Zeitler, like the guys that we had that were actually like, "Oh, we should have kept that guy, yeah, let them go." We should, you know, we should have we should have had him. 
It's like you're watching that guy on another team. Like, how many? I'm telling you, the last few years, how many times have you seen that where you're like, wait, didn't we have that guy? Was he blocking for Kyler Murray over there? Oh, he's doing a good job over there. Oh, he hasn't missed a snap all season. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, I know he hasn't missed. He hasn't missed a snap all season, and he's one of the top-rated <laughs> offensive linemen. In the uh, Neil isn't leaving. Neil could leave. I mean, he's not leaving now. He's on his rookie contract. But like I said, I guarantee you, Baltimore was sitting there going, "We're not going to trade Orlando Brown Jr." Yeah, <laughs> and that would know, work out. You never know till you get to that fork in the road. But N- Neil and Thomas. They should be bookends here for, like Tim just said, like eight, at least eight years. At least eight years. You, you at would least eight at years. At least eight years. You would hope. Both, both of them. Well, no, I think it would be six years for Andrew. For, okay, yeah, because he was right. Because right, he's, right. he's already, this would be his third year, so that would be his ninth year in the league. Well, they should be here together for at least seven, you know, together strong seven seven years, seven years. Like, all right i'm gonna give it that i'm gonna give it that who yeah. do you want in next year's draft if dj doesn't work out bryce or cj i know you don't want either one yo who i seen something i was gonna send it to you but i i, I was so annoyed they were talking about who's this kid in kentucky he's supposed to be good the quarterback in kentucky right now i don't even know his name I, I, he looks like I, I he looks a little him. like sunshine from remember the titans I don't, i'm not saying that to be sunshine. disrespectful <laughs> I, I love that movie and that character, but um, I, they were saying something about him or he could be a possibility to the Giants. I mean, we don't – honestly, y'all, I, I, I don't know. I got to wait to watch them when college goes, see how these guys look. Obviously, we know we could throw out all the top names of the guys who are going to be uh, coming out, but right now, I'll be honest, I, I have no idea. I, I, don't, I, gotta, I don't think anyone does yet. You know, I, I don't even want to throw out. I'll, yes, I will say C.J. Stroud. I don't think he's going to be the guy. I'm just going to say that. I mean, he may come out and blow my mind. He may look like Warren Moon or or Dan Marino, but I, I doubt it. I don't, I don't think C.J. Stroud will be the guy. If I had to pick either or, if I had to pick either or, I, I would probably go Bryce Young. Yeah. If I if 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 you said Tim, you have to pick one. You know what? I get a good question. If you had to pick one of the three, Daniel Jones, Bryce Young, or CJ Stroud. Oh, I gotta go with you. I gotta, I gotta go Bryce. I, you know, it's, it's like you win by default. You win by default. It's like one horse has a broken leg, the other horse I don't trust. So I gotta take you. <laughs> you win by default. You win. <laughs> That's all good. We yeah. need to see Milton Fox, Beavers, Allen McFadden camp will be competitive. I think we're good. I think we're gonna have a competitive camp. I really oh, do. definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the 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 atmosphere. Not to cut you off, but I think the. Oh. I'm not worried about like the culture. I do believe is gonna is gonna be a different air in in the Giants facility. You know, on the field in in the facility and a lot. I just it's gonna be different. It's gonna be a different feeling. Like, even when we lose, like, and we're going to lose next year. I love everybody here. I love Tim. I, I love the Giants, but we are gonna lose next year. But it'll be different losing. Like it won't be like somebody taking a knife and doing us like my man and saving Private Ryan just slowly horrible death. Like it won't be like that since we're talking about movies. But it, it, it'll it, like it'll feel like we're fighting. It'll feel like we're in the fight and we lost, or we just you know as a better team. You know it won't feel like we're stumbling over our own feet all the time like last year felt. We we I, talk, we we talked about this uh, when you weren't when you weren't around. Um, and my and my question is to you: What do you think the Giants will end up with this year, win win loss wise? Oh, um, uh, I looked at the teams. Well, I'm honestly, I'll say <laughs> if we're uh, damn five and twelve, six and eleven. Hopefully, and I'm being like, like hoping, <laughs> you hoping. know, oh, Randy, because hold, hold on, hold on, I said James, hold on one second. Okay. Uh, Godfather three. Uh, so okay, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> useless information just sticks up in here. Um, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so what are your what's your win total? Um, uh, no more than six, man. No because more than six. No more than six. I'll say six because 
the you know the, the Daniel Jones when he first came into the league a couple couple of years ago that the wins against Washington were like that was notches on his belt. But if you notice last year and then excuse me now with them getting Wentz like that's kind of an upgrade to Heineke kind of you know so they're gonna be more competitive you know the the Cowboys they've been kicking our tail for like three years you know the Eagles always give us a hard time and they're gonna be better. So we're not, we don't have any easy wins in our division. I, I looked at our schedule. I don't know the home. I don't think we know the home the home or away yet. But I, yeah, I say maybe six. Like to be, you know. And that's I don't even know if Daniel Jones is going to be the quarterback for all seventeen. I doubt it. But I, I say six wins at the top max. We all we all know who's going to be the quarterback. <laughs> Um, my brother, my boy, Ohio Hurricane still wants Malik Willis. Still dropping in that super chat for the Malik Willis Express. He is not, he, he has surpassed me. He has surpassed me as being the cheerleader for Malik Willis on the Malik Willis Express. Because I am wearing my, t- you can't really see it, James, but I'm wearing my tightened up t-shirt. I got my tightened up t-shirt on because I'm going to, I'm going to wear that until Malik starts. So it's going to be a while since I take this shirt off. But thank you for the super chat, my friend. I always, I always appreciate Ohio. I always ask him, say, I always say, why, why would you ever leave Ohio? Uh, But you know what? I miss Malik. (laughs) And he was never even here. How do you grow up the son of an NFL owner and be around a business of football your whole life and make all the wrong decisions for your organizations? The Giants for a while hoping for change. How do you do that, James? Well, you you were supposed to be the football. (laughs) The, the founding fathers of football, one of the founding fathers of football, but you, you, your family can't get out from under their own feet. Well, nepotism is no guarantee for success. That's in any, That's anything and so for anything in life, you know, and uh, I found it very funny. I, I'm still laughing about it that we, one of our scouts was the son of the team doctor. Yes. So because his dad can fix uh, broken legs and, and splits well, honestly, and stuff like that, so that, means, well. <laughs> that, that, that means – and that's a good point, right, on that note. But then that means his son can go out there and scout players. Mm-hmm. Did either one of them really have a good eye? You know, it's like I, I don't know, you know, but uh, that's a good point. You know, I, I don't know, man. The Maras, it's like uh, – I don't know, man. I, I'm hoping that he backs off and lets Shane – either good or bad makes his mistakes good or good or bad you know whatever it is i want it to be shane's own decisions you know i don't want it to be like you know we're thinking it's shane but it's really mara right. or we're thinking it's dable but it's really you know shane getting pushed into something and he's pushing dable into something from higher ups like we don't we don't want that so no. whether he sinks or swims i just want it to be his own you know, his own, uh, you want, you want it to be his own. You want it to be his own man. You want it to be his own guy. You want it to be his own team. We got to yeah. get to 60 likes guys. We we're way below. I forgot to, I didn't even know the Ranger game was on tonight. So that's why we had a little bit, we had a good crowd tonight, but we had a little less crowd. Uh, Montana says you are the movie man. Can't get on you on trivia. I'm going to give right. you, a little, I'm going to give you good. I'm going to give you a little hit Montana. He's I good. Watch, man. I don't watch TV. <laughs> I don't watch TV. And I used to have this thing where I didn't sleep. So I would, I for, for for only like 10 years, um, I wouldn't sleep. I'd be up to like three, four o'clock in the morning every night. And I would just watch <laughs> movies. I, when I would watch bad movies, I'd watch anything. I would watch anything that was on HBO. I would watch anything that I had in the DVD player. I would just watch movies. And somehow, I guess, because you're, you're in that dream state. Sometimes the shit just stuck. I don't even know why. Oh, the Celtics are killing the Bucks at the fourth quarter. I know that. Uh, let's see. I think we will win about seven games. I don't see us being the Eagles or Cowboys, though. The Eagles wide receivers will torch our secondary. You got you got a healthy AJ Brown. You got a healthy Devontae Smith. If if, if, if Jalen can get the ball out, I would say if he got if he learns to actually throw the ball accurately down the field. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're, our division is weak. I could we could go winless in our division, and I we, wouldn't be shocked. We that is a great point. We could go winless in the division, one hundred percent. We could go winless in the division. I don't think we will, because I think there will be that fluke game. But I think there yeah. is there is there is a very distinct possibility that we could. Yeah, Hakeem P. Uh, Hakeem and uh, Mr. Alvarez are talking about these are the two guys I think about. Uh, they're talking about the uh, the quarterback Richardson out of uh, Florida. Oh, okay. 
which which I think is actually I, I actually like the kid. I mean, I'd like to see what happens in 2023, but we have to wait and see. Jimmy Smith, that, uh, we're not signing Jimmy. We're not signing Jimmy Smith. Yeah, we're not. We can't. We can't make a sign right now. We don't. We don't have. We had to cut Bradbury just to have room to breathe. Just to have room to breathe. We don't. We we can't. We don't have the cardboard or a sharpie to make a sign, so we can't sign Jimmy Smith right now. We 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 got too many things going on. What is going on with her? Uh, let's see here. Ba, ba, ba. Do, do, do. Uh, let's see. Where are we at here? Where are we at? Derek Ward. We were talking about running backs earlier, about two year running backs. Uh, let's see. James is becoming the Giants defensive back coach. <laughs> James, you're becoming the Giants defensive back coach. Oh, I, I wish. I agree with that. I'll OG. tell you one thing. We wouldn't be giving up no, uh, uh, was it, uh, touchdowns in seven seconds like Leslie Frazier. Hold on. Wait a minute. What movie? Word Mansion. Dark side call now. Nothing is real. She'll never know just how I feel. Loud as the shadows, I walk like a dream. Make me feel crazy. Make me feel so mean. We're going to say it with a love that's blind. Slip to the dark side and cross that line. <laughs> on the dark side. Yeah. Uh, Eddie and the Cruisers. Come on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you know what the part? Yeah, I'm picking like classic joints or like really good, like under, like you got to go like real deep. Well, Eddie, like, and the, Eddie and the Cruisers is probably you know it, it was eighty three I think it was, but it's, that's but that's a known I mean I I know good not, movies you, you know because you know a lot of these guys are young. Well, that's true. That's true. You, you got to figure some of these kids are born in the mid nineties. You know they don't know Eddie and the Cruisers. Hey man, that's what Google and YouTube are for man. That's I had that. You know how I found out about Motown? Well, I listened to it with my grandfather and uncle playing playing it. You know that was that was my YouTube. You know, growing up, you know that's how I uh, found my love for Motown and older rock stuff like that. Jazz used to be CD one hundred one point nine. No such thing anymore. It used to be a no jazz station. Anymore. So here, you, here you go. I was Devin. I was born in ninety nine. Ninety nine. Jesus. Christ. He's gonna party like it's nineteen ninety nine. I mean, but, yeah. but really, he's not he's not gonna know on the dark side. He, what is uh, the, what was the uh was the Beaver Brown band? Was the uh, was the ground that um uh that was the it was the band that was um was the band that I believe did Eddie and the Cruisers. I believe I believe was the I believe was the Beaver Brown band. Hey Tim, hey James, will our defense be stout enough to get us a few wins? What do you think? What do you think about that? Do you think we'll be stout enough? Well, I think a lot of it, <laughs> I don't know what, we've got to see. I think Leonard Williams is going to be a, uh, motivated from having wait, Kayvon wait, there. Hold on one second. Die hard. Um, so what do you, th I mean, so. Uh, like, yo, come on, die hard. Yeah, that's a classic, man. That's a classic. And it's a Christmas movie. It's a Christmas it's movie. It's a Christmas movie. But are we going to be stout enough? We, I don't know about stout enough, but we're not going to be as pushover as we were last year. And I do think that we'll be more aggressive as far as blitzing at certain times where we didn't last year for some reason. Uh, but the one thing, like Tim was just saying about, you know, we lost Bradbury in our secondary. I don't like, I just feel like certain games were just probably going to get smoked. You know, like depending on what the quarterback wide receiver matchup is or even tight end, like I did some games, yes, would definitely our defense would definitely probably get us at least two two wins. Our defense it'll be because of our defense. Maybe two to three would be because of the defense. Because the offense was pretty putrid last year. Yeah. So that that like, you know, we're talking about the defense because you know, we're hoping Wink's gonna come in here and actually have us uh fly around and get Len Williams to get off his you know what. But the offense was pretty bad. We got to hope the offense can actually move the ball a little bit and, and like, I mean, not scare anybody, but just like, no, we're going to at least score some points. Like, well, I we're hope pretty, we're, yeah, we're pretty, know, especially towards pretty, the end there. We have, future, we, have, we have a last question. Last question before I go to bed is Eli Manning a Hall of Famer? I say 100% yes. What? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wasting uh, oxygen or carbon dioxide even answering that. That's, you don't think Eli Manning's a Hall of Fame player? That's 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 blasphemous. Even anybody, you should never be on this channel even asking that. But he's Eli, saying, he's Eli saying, Manning, Eli he's Manning is a god saying, on two feet. 
He thinks that man is saying a hundred percent yes. He if is. that man was smoking crack on the streets of New York, I would jump on and be like, "What are you doing, Eli? Put that pipe down, man! I gotta save you! Come on, yes. put it down! You need Jesus. <laughs> you kidding me? Eli is the man, always." Oh my God! What is this? Uh, tell me the juice, the best action film ever. Al Pacino, Robert That's not. That's not juice. That's so uh, much. That's heat. Come heat. on. That's not juice. Thank you. Heat. Uh, that's heat. You gotta say Stalag Seventeen, black and white movie. I like Stalag Seventeen. I'm more of a fan of The Great Escape, but that was a good. Longest Day, John Wayne, the cast of others. That was a good. Beaver Brown Band. It was John Cafferty in the Beaver Brown Band. That was you a know, good. The business. Good black. That. Good black and white war movie, Run Silent, Run Deep. Oh, that is a very good one. Torpedo Run, Destination Tokyo was a good movie. That is a good one. That is a okay. good movie. I of course, watched... Lo Logic is pulling them out. Enemy Below, I that's, a... Enemy below. <laughs> that's a good one. I just watched uh, Big Jake with John mm. Wayne. Uh, on, uh, it was on ISPN or something like that. I forget what it was. I just I was My... <clears throat> just two, two fun facts for y'all out there. John Wayne was a very racist man. Not going to bring that up right now, but my grandfather loves John Wayne. I've watched a lot of his movies. His movies are dope. Yep. I've watched a lot of John Wayne movies. I Hey, you know, entertainment is entertainment. He has some classics under his belt, John Wayne does, in the Western, definitely in the Western category, must say. Well, and also World War II with the, like, the flying uh, oh. leathernecks. And, uh, I mean, there's one of my favorite John Wayne movies, Sands of Iwo Jima. You yes. Know? You know what? Yes. That's right. Yes. I forgot about it. Yes. Um, forgot about that one. And I know people say that he was racist. I know that. But if you actually read what he said in Playboy. <laughs> yes, no, it's great. The, the, the it's Playboy great. article, the Playboy article is the because article. Because you always read the articles, boys. The always Playboy read article the article. is what people are referring to when they say John Wayne is racist. That's what they're referring to. It's the Playboy mm -hmm. article, which was in 1960-something. But you have to take it into perspective of the times that it was said it's different if he was said it now in 2022 2021 or whatever year this freaking is yeah i would say he's 100 racist but if you put it in the historical perspective and what he actually said wasn't really racist it was his opinion but it was probably not the best form and best time to say it but the problem was it was the it was the prevalent thoughts of certain people and a large segment of people in the sixties. Yes. Well, that's 60s, what I said. Was a, different... 60s was a crazy time, crazy yeah. time. And that, and that's what, that's what people more refer to that article when they say he's racist. I'm not, and I'm not defending what he said. I'm just no, saying no, you I have know. to take just it. You just have clarifying. to take it. It's like my mother. Sometimes, you know, I, I have a lot of friends of color, we'll say, and she's from, you know, she's, from the thirties. So yes. one of the terms they use would be, would be, you know, color, you a colored person, a person of color. He would say, well, you know, you're, and I used to laugh because my friend Randy, who was from the Philippines one day um, we, he was, I was on the phone with him. Oh, and, she, and I was talking to him and she goes, you know, Oh, is, is that your colored friend? And I love it. Cause Randy's on the phone. <laughs> I put him on speakerphone. He goes, and he goes, Mrs. Online big blue. What color do you think I am? You know, what's co what, what, what color it is? And she goes, she goes, oh, I don't mean anything by it. And she goes, and she, she grew up in a steel, uh, coal mining steel town. Yeah. yeah. So that's, okay. that's, just, that's just the way they talk. That's the way they know? talk. And, and that's why I said, not that she's racist. It's just, you know, she's an old lady. <laughs> this, this, yeah, no, that definitely matters. No. Yeah. So, and that's like I said, I'm not defending John Wayne, but I'm just putting, I like to put in perspective sometimes. Oh, Guns of Navarone. That was a good that's, movie. That's a classic. Gregory Peck. Guns and Navarone tearing up your battle zones. Method oh, Man. the battle zone. Das Boot. I like Das Boot, but my thing is this. Which one? The black and white Das Boot or the remake? You have True Grit, Stagecoach, one of John Wayne's first movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, True Grit was a good one. I liked True Grit. The remake wasn't bad either, but I liked the original. I didn't see the, re I didn't see the remake. The remake actually wasn't bad. Uh, my grandfather watched it. You know, he actually said, "Ah, right, it was all right, but I like John's better." <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. I was born in '99, but one of my favorite rap albums is Doggy Style. Well, who? Well, it should be. It should, it should be. be. I mean, that's that's like essential Snoop. I mean, come on. I mean, that's. 
Uh, Running Scared was a good movie, but are you talking Running Scare with Bill uh, with uh, Gregory Hines? I say there's a yeah, there's yep, there's two different. There there's you go. Two different running Scared because if you would do with uh, what's his name, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, R.I.P. Uh, Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal and Billy Hines. Crystal. They're the cops, and then there's the other one with. Uh, I forgot his name, yeah, but they're the cops in Chicago. That's a that's a good one. That's actually school. that's actually a pretty good movie. Another '80s movie that was actually a really good movie. Yeah. Oh, let's see here. Oh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's that's nothing. It's the okay, Johnny Dangerously. Um, let's go. Yeah, the, good, the good, the bad, and the ugly. He's just slapping them down. Just uh, I just like, that's always that's always my favorite. That was what I remember seeing Johnny Dangerously in the movie theater as a kid. And I remember once in one of the scenes, it was Joe Pesci. You know, he pulls out a gun, and he goes, and he goes, he's got this huge ass gun, and he goes, "This gun will shoot through a school." Then <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember my mother hung me on a hook once, once, because he hangs him up on the hook. Oh my goodness gracious! I really do need a life. <laughs> you know, it's uh, crazy. Some of the stuff that gets said in movies that you probably. They wouldn't want you to say that line now about let's well, just shoot through a school. It's yeah, are crazy, you, you know. Well, like, yeah, yeah, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that at all. Forbidden Planet. I have Robbie the robot on the floor. Uh, what do you guys? Uh, what do you guys? Oh, here's a good question. What uh, do you guys do for work outside of YouTube? You don't mind me asking. I'm. Uh, oh, I'm, I rob I'm, kids for their Halloween candy, even though it's I, not Halloween. I'm. Uh, I'm uh, what they refer to as just uh, naturally gifted. So. I don't have to do anything. I'm going to refer to as a ladies' man. <laughs> gigolo. <laughs> I'm just a gigolo everywhere I go. I don't do anything. I'm a YouTuber, man. <laughs> in, other words, in other words, James is like, I don't want to say. Either that or he froze again. <laughs> oh, James froze again. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um... Let's see here. Oh, James is frozen. The day the uh, Moscow on the Hudson. That's a good movie with Robin Williams. Uh, I saw that. The day the Earth stood still. I don't like the one that um, Keanu Reeves. Um, I, I I didn't like that one. Uh, I'm trying to get James back. Let's see if I can get James back here. Uh, oh, James is gone. Oh no. Oh. Hmm. James, let me try to text James. James, James, James. Here you go. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what, guys? We're actually gonna end it anyways. Because I, I'm a little I'm a little tired. So uh we're gonna hang out here. Well, James, we're actually we're escaped from New York. The thing. James, you still there? Yes, I am. <laughs> Today. James, we're actually we're gonna cut out now, James, because you keep cutting out. But you know what, guys, we're gonna do this. We're gonna wrap this up. Appreciate everyone who hung out as much as long as they did. James, don't go anywhere because I want to talk to you a second. But again, I appreciate yeah, everyone. Yeah. We'll do a movie thing later, but uh, I'm tired. I want to get out of here. And I appreciate everyone that's hung in and hang out for the for the period of the way that they did. And again, this is Tim and James saying, have yourselves a good night, and we'll talk to you hopefully in the near future. Good night, everyone. Yes, sir. Stay safe. Stay safe.